Hello and welcome to day two of the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships here in London's beautiful Aquatic Centre. My name's John Mason taking you through the action this week and I tell you what, if last night is anything to go by, tonight is going to be an amazing night of racing. As you can see, here is our medal table. Our athletes have signed their names, British champions, silver and bronze. Some of them booking their places to the Olympics and the Paralympics in Paris over the summer. Tonight, the best in the world going to be battling it out in that pool for much of the same. Who's going to be British champion and who is going to be on their way to Paris? We know what it takes to achieve a dream. Dedication, courage, determination, control, desire. And our goal is to channel that energy. To champion the nation's best aquatic athletes support the teams who support them, inspire anyone and everyone to feel the benefits of a love of water and propel each sport onwards and upwards, or even downwards, by doing it the right way, sustainably, with integrity, with purpose. Because the thrill of seeing Great Britain being great at aquatic sport is something everyone can get excited about. We are Aquatics GB. Hello and welcome. Yes, day two of finals here at the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships in London's beautiful Aquatic Centre. I tell you what, you lot at home are in for a real treat. I've got some very special guests in the studio with me. Before we get to that, let's take a look at what the schedule is. So much swimming action happening in that pool. We're starting with the women's 1500 meter freestyle event. We're then moving into the women's 50 meter breaststroke, which is a Paris para final. The men's 200 meter butterfly events, then the women's 200 meter breaststroke events. We then move into our final uh, half of the night. We've got the men's 100 meter backstroke and finishing with the women's 100 meter backstroke. It's gonna be fast, it's gonna be furious, and we're gonna be putting some more people on those teams for the Olympics and Paralympics. Speaking of, I have some Olympians and Paralympians here with me. Uh, joining me, we have the incredible Susanna Hext and James Guy, welcome. Hello, nice to, sit, nice to be here finally. <laughs> yes, it's good to see you again. And Susanna, I'm going to come to you first because we need to talk about last night. I didn't get to chat to you after your race. You hit that qualification time in that 200 free. Uh, it's obviously got to take that pressure off. Oh, 100%. Um, yeah, hitting that qualifying time in the heats and the finals was a massive, massive relief, I have to say. Um, I can build through to Sunday, got 100 free on Sunday and then hopefully build through to Paris, fingers crossed. Uh, well, you know, we'll see how that goes. Of course, you put yourself in a great position in front of those selectors. But for those at home who have never met you, you know, I just I just want to let them know. Susanna is actually a triple gold medalist, a European medalist, yeah. as an equestrian. Uh, yeah, used to ride horses, side. para equestrian. Yeah. How good is that? How good is that, James? <laughs> How good is that? <laughs> like, to come I'm from scared of horses, yeah. I couldn't, I, I couldn't get on that, no way. You know, and I, like to come from one sport to be able to achieve such amazing things, to come over to this, like how did that happen? Honestly, I have no idea. Um, obviously, two very different sports. Um, I started swimming for physio and fitness for riding, um, and then yeah, I thought I'll get classified, see what happens, and then kind of the rest is history. Rolled so. the dice and became a Paralympian. We love to see it. <laughs> I'll give that. And James, you know, you guys used to train together at Bath. Uh, we haven't seen you race yet. Uh, what's uh, what's sort of going on for you this week? You've got quite a quite a busy program, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, it's kind of a, a busy schedule. So first race tomorrow is the 100 Freestyle, uh, 100 Butterfly Friday, and then 200 Freestyle Sunday. Um, it's my, you know, obviously fourth Olympic trials now. So yeah, really exciting week to come ahead. And you talk about, you know, it being your fourth Olympic trials. Does it ever get less stressful? Yeah, of course. I feel like, you know, this is my... I think 13th British Championships, so major meet in April. Um, and definitely each year as you get a bit older, a bit more experience, it becomes easier and easier. So you see some of the guys, it's their first kind of British Championship Olympic trials and they're so scared, they're so nervous. But at the end of the day, you have, this, you have, you have your own lane. You've mm. done all this work and training. It's just about going out there and enjoying what you do and, you know, give it your best shot. And you always look at it like you enjoy it, you know. And, I, you know, I just want to touch on, you became world champion in 2015. We used to see you swim the 400 free, the two fly. You, your program has really changed as you've gotten older. Um, why is that? 
<laughs> I feel like as you get older, you know, you have to find what really works for you and what you respond to in training. Um, and obviously moving from away from Bath this year, going back to Milford, my, you know, where I became world champion in 2015, it's definitely more of an ind individualized program of what I need to do to get better again. Um, but yeah, I'm still obviously training a lot of the old meters and it's quite, very, very intense. But, you know, the main thing for me is being happy. Um, I'm happy with what I'm doing. And I feel like that in itself is where, where that inner peace is found and it can produce some amazing results. So hopefully there'll be a, good, a few good ones this week. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing your race. And Thanks, Susanna, mate. you know, we watched you as well. You were at, uh, in Tokyo at the Paralympics. You kind of had a few health issues there, but then came back. You've been on fine form. You became world champion last year, which is an amazing thing. Yeah, Two world champions here. Um, has mindset really played a part in that? Has mindset, your mindset. Um, yeah, massively. Um, yeah, I've had to bounce back from a lot of setbacks, as a lot of people know. Um, Tokyo was, yeah, heartbreaking in many ways, fourth in two finals. Um, but I think it's made me kind of even more hungry to go mm. out there to Paris and put everything I got into it and see what happens. I, I absolutely can't wait. So. You know, for, uh, you, you say that like fourth in two finals. Uh, professional athletes are in this position. They say the worst is fourth and ninth, I suppose. Um, and that sort of really sort, sorts out the wheat from the chaff. You know, who can pick themselves up and move forward and have that positive mindset and come back hungrier and, and uh, fighting harder for what they want? Yeah, it's been a battle. Like, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't been in a rut. Like, you know, 2023 20, was tough year. Uh, no, 22 was a really tough year. I kind of was like, you know, questioning a little bit whether I keep going or not. Um, but I'm really pleased to have, obviously, last year coming world champion. I mean, yeah, can't beat that. That's pretty good. And <laughs> you know feeling. how that feels, right, James? Yeah, of course. I feel like, you know, my first Olympic Games in Rio, I came fourth. It's the worst place to finish. And to get beat by someone who shouldn't have been there is even harder. It, it always is very, very challenging. Um, you know, I always believe everything happens for a reason, and that's just part of you know life. And it's how you kind of come back from that. How do you improve from that? And always look, look for the good side in things. And you know, end of the day, we're, we're athletes. What we do, but it doesn't last forever. So enjoy what you're doing because it, it's over so so quickly. And you look back in 10 years' time when you are retired and think, you know, actually. I've left no stone unturned here and I've enjoyed everything, everything I've done. Well, look, I've enjoyed watching you guys do it. Good luck for this week. Um, I can't wait to see what you do throughout there and hopefully Paris over the summer. Uh, for those of you at home who haven't seen a Parrot event before, you might not too, be too sure about how it all works. I headed up there on the diving board with the lovely Ellie Simmons to make it a little bit clearer for you. So let's take a look. So this week at the Aquatics GB Swimming Championships, we are combining both the para swimming and the AB swimming. We have the Olympics and the Paralympics coming up over the summer, and these are the trials for both events. But what that means is uh, those at home who have may never seen a para event, we're very, very lucky to have the incredible Ellie Simmons with us. You're here with us all week, Ellie. Yes, I am. I'm so excited. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. And for mm -hmm. those at home who have never seen something, why don't you start by telling us uh, about the classifications? Yeah, so there are 14 classifications in para swimming. S1 to S10 is physical impairment. The lower the number, the greater the impairment. There's also three visual impairment classifications, S11, S12, S13, and also S14, which is intellectual impairment. So there's many different classifications. And here this week, unlike uh, at a major, we will be swimming multi-classification events, um, which work a little bit differently. So these guys swimming this week will be looking at getting the point system. So a thousand points means they're the closest to the world record. So you could finish fourth, you could finish last, you could finish first. It's all about the finish. Who's greater to the points, who's nearer to the points means closest to the world record. Of course, so the finish of those races are going to look a little bit different. We have to wait until the final swimmer has touched the wall to see who is going to be taking the title and of course who is going to be going to Paris over the summer. Thank you so much. Thank Hopefully you. that has made it a little bit clearer for everyone at home, but do not fret. We're going to be here guiding you through all the info throughout the week. So there you have it. Uh, hopefully that's a little bit clearer for all of you at home. Now, uh, joining me in the studio once again, the incredible Molly Renshaw and Ellie Simmons. I have to touch on last night. How amazing was it? Wow, well, what a first day one finals it, it was. Some super fast women. The para guys, again, were on form. Many hit that qualification time and standard. It was some great swimming. Also, as well, to see Adam Peaty as well back on that luck really and coming away with that gold and also the hit in the qualification time for Paris. Yeah he looked amazing didn't he Mal? 
Yeah, some amazing swims, I think. Adam's swim was obviously iconic. We had the ladies in the 200 freestyle as well, that relay qualifying. So a great night, and I'm excited to see what's coming up tonight. Yes, speaking of tonight, another great night of racing. Ellie, I'm going to come to you first. Let's look at the power program. Who at home? Uh, what, who should they be looking out for? Those yes, so first of all, we've got there. Para, S, uh, para 100 meters backstroke, sorry. S12, um, Stephen Clegg, had a, he's been on great, great form. Recently at the Aberdeen uh, series, he was near enough to that world record, so we could possibly see a world record tonight. He did hit that qualification time this morning, hopefully again, hit that qualification time tonight. Also, the para 100 meters backstroke female too. We have Alice Ty. She is the world record holder in this event in the S8 category. She hit that qualification time this morning, so hopefully see her in tonight's final. Well, we will be seeing her in, her in tonight's final, but hopefully she can hit that qualification time tonight and maybe get as close to that world record she holds, which was set in this pool in 2019. I know, I remember being here when she did that, and I know she was gutted to sort of have to miss the last Paralympics in Tokyo for the amputation. I spoke to her this morning. She was super excited to be back racing. I can't wait to see what she does. Molly, moving over to the swimming program, it's a stacked field tonight across most events but give me your highlights yeah so we've got a really exciting night tonight we're kicking off tonight with the women's 1500 so one of the longer distance events for the women and um, we have 14 year old Amelie in uh, lane four tonight so she won this event last year at the British Championships I think she won it in around 16 19 and since then she's dropped another 10 seconds off that if she wants to get close to that qualifying time tonight she's going to have to drop another 10 seconds but she's 14 years old so i really wouldn't <laughs> put it past her yeah i mean miracles can happen and i know she did that last year on her birthday so if she does that again she would have won the british title twice at the age of 14 which is crazy to think about um another pick who's next Okay, so next up we have the men's 100 backstroke, backstroke. Both the backstroke events this morning were amazing, but we had Johnny Marshall up first this morning. He set the tone with a big PB, and it's been great swimming from him. He seemed very happy after the race, very chilled. And then following that, we had Ollie Morgan, who came in the next heat. He probably saw how well Johnny did, and kind of think that pushed him on. So there's Ollie on the screen now. He had a great swim. He's the third ever uh, British male swimmer to be under 53 seconds. So really solid swim from him he was under the qualifying time and just off the british record so i think that race could be really exciting oh, i can't wait to see it. you know he, he burst onto the scene sort of at the last year's british champs and watching him develop at the majors throughout the world and stuff he seems he seems to have come back this year with a level of confidence he didn't have last year sort of belief in himself yeah definitely i think last year for him was maybe a little bit of a shock i think he won all three of the backstroke events at the british champs mm. so i think from then he's just building confidence building confidence and he's put him in a great position here this week but it's not just the men in the backstroke, is it? No. The women's 100 meter looks amazing as well. Yeah, equally as stacked. So up first, we had Kathleen Dawson this morning. She's run the fastest time that she has since the last Olympics. So she hasn't been under that 60 second barrier in a few years now. So amazing heat swim, big confidence. You can see big smiles from her this morning. So next up was Mehdi. Um, she actually qualified for the, for the team last night in the four by two relay. She picked up a bronze medal in that. So pressure is kind of off for her she knows she's on the team but her pb is under the qualifying time so definitely have no realm to do that and then also the third contender that we should look out for is lauren cox she had another great swim this morning again her pb is under the qualifying time so i think that's gonna be a really tight race tonight really exciting so kathleen dawson Medi harris lauren cox it's going to be an amazing one to watch and a great one to sort of finish on as well i can't wait so there you have it. Uh, loads for you to look forward to tonight. Get yourselves comfortable. It's going to be a great night of racing. I'm going to be sending Molly over now to commentary. You're going to be hearing her at home. And of course, here in the venue is going to be you, Ellie Simmons. Enjoy your evening, ladies. Uh, and it's over to Andy in commentary. We'll see you in a bit. Thank you, John. Really looking forward to tonight. It's uh, night two of six. It's a six day meet here at the Aquatics GB Swimming Championships 2024. And well, after the first night, we've already had some absolute fireworks. Six able-bodied swimmers already chosen for the team to go to Paris. They'll be on the Eurostar with the seventh Laura Stevens coming second in a consideration time. So she will put herself forward for that uh, discretionary selection by the selectors. But Kiana McInnes won the 200 fly. Freya Colbert won the 200 free. Adam Peaty, of course, that 57-9 winning the uh, 100 metres breaststroke. And then Abby Wood, Meghan Harris, 
and Lucy Hope all uh, making that 4 by 2 freestyle relay which qualified. And I know uh, Paul sitting next to me on the power side, uh, even more so as a qualified from, uh, from the power side. Yeah, we had a, a good day yesterday. We saw Tully Kearney and Susanna Hex, who you just saw in the studio there with uh, John and James Guy. She qualified on that uh, 200 freestyle. Poppy Maskell, Olivia Newman Baronius, and Louise Spiris in the top three spots in the 200 freestyle as well. Of course, it's not qualification, nomination criteria, I should say. And uh, this morning, uh, another six swimmers also made that nomination criteria. So. Paris swimmers doing really well. More to come tonight, hopefully. Well, there certainly will be. And here are the athletes for, it's actually the final heat. It's a heat declared winner, this women's 1500 meters freestyle. Four heats this morning, and this is the final heat. So there's all 10 lanes being used. Not normally 10 lanes in a final session, but here's Lucy Fox in lane number two. 17 year old, did a European consideration time for the juniors from Wickenham District on that uh, 200 metres butterfly. Here in lane six, Michaela Glenister of University of Stirling. And then, well, in lane number three, Lucy Hanke of uh, Loughborough University. She's a Belgian national. We don't normally have foreigners, I was gonna say, non-British people uh, in the final session. But uh, because this is a, a final heat, in the heats, of course, we can have swimmers from any nations and then uh, there's Michaela Glenister of University of Stirling Emily Bloxage well what an absolutely phenomenal swimmer she is she's still 14 years of age and her national age group record is faster than the 15 year olds the 16 year olds the 17 year olds and the 18 year olds utterly extraordinary can she go a nine second lifetime best and do a consideration time, a nomination time for the Olympic Games. That's Amelie Bloxage in lane number four from City of Salford in that yellow hat there. 14, she's 15 next week. Can she do it? I think she can, you know. She's already dropped 10 seconds this year. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see what she can do here. That's Molly Renshaw, double Olympic finalist in the 200 metres breaststroke. World short course champion in 200 breaststroke. The 200 breaststroke is uh, later in this event. Only still the British record holder. It's the 1500 freestyle. 30 lengths of the pool, the 1500 metres freestyle, the final heat. And uh, Phoebe Arbuckle of Warrender in lane zero, right at the top there. Then Holly Wilson of Leeds in one. They're having a great meet. She beat the uh, European junior 200 metres freestyle consideration time last night. I think there's uh, 20 swimmers already from the European juniors already achieved consideration time. I think they're going to start having problems because my best guess after after a day and a half, they've already got 20 swimmers achieved the consideration time. I think they, it's a maximum of 30 or 32 that they can choose. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do there because obviously I think they have to prioritise the individual races. But the relays are looking so good. We saw so much depth in the women's 200 freestyle last night, um, so it'd be a shame to see some of those girls miss out on that. We certainly will. Well, this 1500 metres freestyle, I'm going to I'm going to watch every single hundred time for you because if uh, Emily Bloxage in lane four is going to do that time, she's going to have to go quite a bit quicker than her lifetime best, 61.9 to the 100. She was 62.8 when she set her lifetime best. So she's already nine tenths of a second inside her lifetime best. She's got to go a lifetime best by pretty much 10 seconds. So we'll be following that and uh, we'll just check and see how far ahead of her lifetime best she is at every single 100 meters turn. In fact, I can give it to you at 50s if you want it, but uh, at the moment, let's see. I'll give you this one, 135.5. What is she there? 134.5, so she's a full second ahead at the moment, but there's still an awful long way to go. 27 lengths still to go at that turn. Yeah, very long way to go, but I think this is the only way that she can do it. You know, she's kind of just got to attack the race from the start. I think the girls will probably push her through the first half of the race, but I do think the back half of the race might be a bit of a battle on her own. And interesting with uh, Emily, she, she seems to go pretty much even split. So whatever time she does at the halfway, almost every time she does a 1500 metres freestyle, 
almost every single time. The time that she does at the halfway will uh, will give a really good, really good idea of where she's going to be for the full 1500 meters freestyle. Two seconds ahead already at the 200 meters. Well, if she keeps that up, that's a second per 100. That would be a 15 second lifetime best. Only one British woman in history has ever gone under 16 minutes. Yeah, Jazz Carlin, um, obviously Olympic medalist in the 400 and the 800 freestyle. So this is a little bit longer than Jazz, um, Jazz preferred. But yeah, Jazz's best time is 15.47. That is the British record for this event. Emily currently sits as the third fastest GB um, female in this event. So for 14 years old, it's, she, she's a real talent. I think she's definitely one to look out for in the future. Well, how good is she? Here's a stat for you, Molly. Emily is faster than Katie Ledecky at her age. That is extraordinary. So Emily at 14 years and two months, was 16.20 for a 15.00, and Katie Ledecky was 16.24. <laughs> that's, that's a good start. That's I'd be taking that one. <laughs> take anything. To be honest, if I could do 16.24 any time in my life, it would be great, but age 14 years and two months. That was last year. Gracious me. Well, she's still on good form here. It's still very early days, though. And, of course, you can get the pacing quite badly wrong on a 1500 meters if you go out too quickly. Let's see the time there, 3.44.79. So she's about uh, 1.5 seconds inside the uh, time that she set a lifetime best. She's got to end up about nine seconds ahead, so 1.5 at the moment. Yeah, she's definitely swimming this with a lot of intent. You can kind of see, compared to the other girls, they seem maybe a little bit more relaxed. She has a slightly higher straight rate than the others, but I think this is exactly what she's got to do. She's got to get out there and attack it and just see what time she can get at the end. That's the 400 metres turn for 17.3. So she's still about 1.4 uh, inside her lifetime best split. We're asking an awful lot, I have to say, but wouldn't it be exciting? It would just be amazing if she could do that uh, Olympic consideration time, the nomination time of 16.01.95. 16.01 for 40 years. Just extraordinary. Yeah, that would be amazing, I think that she made such big steps last year and I think for her to win the British Champs last year was a bit of a shock. So, kind of glad that that came last year, so she kind of got it out of her system. She, she's here today knowing that this this is capable, it's been around. Um, but yeah, if she could make the Olympic team age 15, that would be, it'd be amazing. Well, she's uh, just about holding exactly the same time now that she set per 50 metres when she set her lifetime best of 16.10. 16.10.0 is her lifetime best, and she's got to try and go 16.01 to make the Olympic team. It's a massive ask at this age. It really is. Well, 32.6 for that last 50, and she set a lifetime best going 32.6. So if she's going to go Olympic qualifying, she's got to just pick it up a little bit from here. But her second half is really good. Talk about pacing and uh, negative splitting. Back half faster than the first half. Yeah, and often seen a lot more in um, in the freestyle events, especially even over 200 metres. You see the likes of Molly Callahan from Australia. She negative splits the 200 freestyle, so definitely more seen in the freestyle events. But she's yeah, she looks great, and I think even if she can get almost close to that consideration time, if she puts herself in with a chance, the selectors might look at that and take her for experience because at such a young age, they'd, I think they'd be silly not to. Well, it'd be really interesting if she does go under the, uh, the FINA A time. FINA, the world's uh, swimming body, do set times which you have to achieve in order to attend the Olympic Games. There is a basic level, uh, but I'm sure she'll be way underneath that. So, first over at this, the 600 metres turn, is Amelie Bloxich in lane number four. In lane five, it's Fleur Lewis of Loughborough University, and then it's pretty close for the next place is Michaela Glenister in six. Lucy Henke, the Belgian, in lane number three is four. Fifth is Lucy Fox. Six, Holly Wilson. So no doubt about the leader. And she went out pretty quickly down that first uh, two or three hundred metres or so. And then she's just gone now right on her own lifetime best pace per 50, which is still underneath. She's still quicker at this mark. Seven minutes, point nine six. And she was 701.3. 
when she set her lifetime best. So she's just about four tenths of a second inside her lifetime best split at the moment. But she's just going a tiny bit slower per 50 than she was when she set that lifetime best at the moment. Yeah, I think if she wants to get close to that qualifying time, she is going to have to pick it up. It's so tough. Like she, She's out there on her own. I imagine she works a lot on her pacing and training. She probably knew that this would be the situation in this race. But she, she honestly has nothing to lose. She's 14 years old. There's years ahead of her. So I think, yeah, she's got nothing to lose. Get out there, see what she can do. And just, I guess it's a waiting game after this. And I guess she's also got the 800 and the 400 late this week. So again, plenty more chances. So hopefully this just blows off the cobwebs and gets set her up for a good week. Indeed, well, we've already had a 14-year-old national champion. That was last year. That was Emily Boxage. She's still 14. She's not 15 until next week. And well, if she continues this and in, uh, in this position, just about five metres ahead of the second swimmer, Fleur Lewis, we'll have another 14-year-old. Again, Emily Boxage as the national champion, senior national champion again. So Blockstitch leading by about what, five or six metres, maybe a little bit more, seven or eight metres now from Fleur Lewis in lane five from Loughborough. And then the rest of the field, maybe about 10 metres or so back. Just see them swimming into the picture about now. <laughs> there we go. Up in three, that's Lucy Hanke, the, uh, the Belgian swimmer. And also in lane number six, Michaela Glenister of the University of Stirling. So that was the 800 metres turn, and she's going well still. She's still on for lifetime best, and this is pretty special, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, she looks great, and I think touching on the fact that she's only 14, it's, it's quite a young field across the whole across the whole race. You know, we have 15-year-olds Phoebe, Holly, and Ava. Um, Emily is obviously 14 years old, but it's quite a young race to be fair, and I think it's a good experience for these guys to be racing in an evening session, especially against kind of your older swimmers like Amber Keegan, who's been around for quite a long time and recently transitioned to open water. So for them to have that experience here tonight is great. Well, she's now right on her lifetime best uh, split at the at last turn. That was the 850 metres turn. She's right on it. So. She's looking at the moment to swim somewhere around uh, 16 minutes 10, maybe 16, 11, if she keeps this pace up, right on her lifetime best. That's the 900 metres turn. The lifetime best was set of a 9.43.75. She's just gone 9.44.1, so just four tenths of a second outside now of her lifetime best. But, uh, she's still working hard, really is. It's so young, I mean, it's just amazing that she's got the uh, She's got the ability just to go in and lead a national, national final by this much. She's not top Fleur Lewis, though. Fleur Lewis looks pretty good, you know. Yeah, Fleur's, Fleur's up there with her, and hopefully um, Emily can see her on each turn as well. But I think, like I said earlier, having that experience last year, breaking onto the scene, I think that was quite a big shock for her. I remember seeing her face at the, at the end of the race, and she was pretty shocked, bless her. So, I can imagine she's quite nervous coming into this. Like, there's no pressure on her at all, but I'm, I'm sure she's kind of had this dream now, and it's definitely within her reach, but she's going to have to pick it up over these last 500 metres. So coming into the 1,000-metre turn, and this is the final heat of the women's 1,500 metres freestyle. And as she has right from the start, Emily Bloxage of City of Salford is leading from second place, Fleur Lewis. And uh, it has been about... Uh, about six or seven metres, but I have to say that uh, Fleur Lewis is just splitting about one tenth of a second faster at the moment per 50. So she is catching very, very slightly on every single 50 metres at the moment, but she's a decent way ahead here, is uh, Emily Bloxage. Bloxage leads from Fleur Lewis of Loughborough in second. Third and fourth at the moment are Lucy Hanke of uh, Loughborough University and Michaela Glenister in lane six. Of University of Stirling and uh, well a much quicker 50 there 32-4 from Emily Bloxage that was much faster she's really picked it up that's interesting half a second faster on that 50 than it uh, than Fleur Lewis was yeah I think she's probably realizing she's coming into the last third of this race and if she if she wants to get close this time she's gonna have to consistently hold that bit of a drop on each 50 so the 1100 meters turn she set a lifetime best of on 11.50.2. Uh, excuse me, 11.53.2. She's just gone 11.54.8. So she's about 
a second and a half outside of her lifetime best, so she's currently looking at about 16, 11, 16, 12. It's fascinating to watch her, how she how she completes this 1500. Every single 50 meters, we've got a split from her lifetime best, and she's still pushing and pushing hard. Yeah, she looks great, and I think, as I mentioned at the start, she has a slightly higher stroke rate than the rest of them, quite a solid kick throughout, and she's not failing, to be honest. She still looks really strong, and, you know, there's still... What's left? We've got 300 metres left after this turn, so... I don't know. It's, I think she's going to really struggle to get down to that qualification time, but if she can put in a good, a good performance here, she'll definitely be in for a chance. Well, 16.11 was the top 10 time for the World Championships in Fukuoka last year. And she's going to be right on that time, I think. 13 minutes flat at the 1,200 metres. So she's got six lengths left at that turn. And she's still rep, uh, repping uh, just uh, just about exactly the same 50 as Fleur Lewis in second position, the Loughborough University student. And the yellow hat of the city of Salford, Emily Bloxage. Still hard to believe she's only 14. I know I've missed this about four or five times, but she's 14 years of age doing 1500 metres freestyle. She's leading the national championship by about five metres and has done so for the last about thousand. Yeah, she's it's unbelievable, really. And I think just having that experience from last year is kind of what's um, what's kind of given her the confidence here. And she knows that she's kind of just got to take it out. I think she probably knew that this would be a race out there on her own, but. Yeah, she looks great. We're coming into the last 200 metres now, so I imagine she's really digging deep. The pain is probably kicking in quite a lot, but let's see how fast she can go down this last four lengths. Well, Fleur Lewis is still tracking her in second, but uh, four lengths to go in this final heat of the women's 1500 metres freestyle. And Emily Bloxage again, two tenths of a second faster on that last 50 than Fleur Lewis in second place. Third place at the moment, just about to turn. At 30 metres behind is uh, Lucy Hanke of Loughborough University with Michaela Glenister very close behind in fourth. But no doubt about the leader at the moment. And unless Fleur Lewis can do something pretty amazing, Fleur Lewis is the British short course record holder on the 1500 metres freestyle. The ninth fastest Brit in history, that is Fleur Lewis in the black hat. But uh, at the moment, it's all about Emily Bloxich, the 14 year old. 15 next Tuesday. So if you know her, wish her best. Send her, send her birthday card. We're going to get a thousand <laughs> birthday cards now. But two lengths left here. Molly, Molly Renshaw, double Olympic finalist. This is something special, and she may not uh, make the nomination time in this race, but so uh, she still can be considered for the team. It would be great to see her selected at uh, that age, because then she'll be 19 when uh, the next Olympics comes by in Los Angeles, and that would be a fabulous thing to see her with a little bit of Olympic experience already on the belt going to LA. Yeah, absolutely, and I think having that experience at such a young age kind of shapes you going into a senior career, so I kind of broke onto the scene at quite a young age, and I think that definitely helped me transitioning from kind of the junior to the senior swimming. So 50 metres to go, the final length, 29 down, one to go, and this is the last heat for the women's 1500 metres freestyle and quite extraordinary. She's faster than Katie Ledecky was at this age. Emily Bloxich of City of Salford. Well, can you believe it? She's faster than the world record holder currently when she was 14. A brilliant swimmer. She's just going to be outside of her lifetime best. Her lifetime best, 16.10, but this is a really gutsy swim, and she's swimming away from the field still. And the 14-year-old Emily Bloxich is again national senior champion on the women's 1500 metres freestyle. Second is Fleur Lewis of Loughborough University. But what a swim, <laughs> goodness me. She's taking huge breaths. Thumbs up, well done, well done. That's a great attitude, a great approach. A fantastic swim, goodness me. Well, she looks like she's recovered already, doesn't she? <laughs> she? She doesn't look like she's just done a 1500, no. Um, but great swim there from Fleur as well. I think that was nearly a five second PB from her. And amazing last 50, she's put 30.66 on the last 50, so amazing back end from her. There's Fleur on the left and you're right, it's a, it's a fabulous PB. 30.6, does that mean she can go a little bit quicker if she, uh, if she goes a little bit earlier, do you think? Am I, am I asking a little bit too much? 
I'm not sure. I'm sure she'll step away from this review with her coach. Um, I think, yeah, I think she can definitely review the kind of timings of her race, see how the splits went throughout. There's a lot of splits to review, but yeah, I'm sure there's definitely time to drop there. So there's the gold and silver in this Aquatics GB Swimming Championships for 2024. It is a national championship doubling up as the trial for the Olympic Games. And Loxich wins the gold, the silver to Fleur Lewis. And well, the third finisher is Lucy Hanke of Loughborough University, but uh, she's a Belgian national. She won't be able to collect a medal in this uh, British championship. So it, uh, the bronze will go to Michaela Glenister of the University of Stirling. Big PB as well from Michaela. I think her PB is a 16.44, so she's dropped four seconds there too. Such a typical freestyle stroke as distance freestyle stroke as well, isn't it? Oh, well done. Oh, well done. Quick message to mum and dad there and a sister who's also swimming here. Amelie Bloxage again for the second time, still age 14, is the senior national champion of the women's 1500 metres freestyle. Fleur Lewis, the silver, and the bronze will go to Glenister. Well, I tell you what, what a way to start the night, right, ladies and gentlemen. Can I get a round of applause for your British champion, Amelie Bloxage? Now, Amelie, almost a year ago, we were in Sheffield, you became British champion at 14. It's your 15th birthday next week. You just did it again, two British titles at the age of 14. What's going through your mind? Well, I wasn't really expecting to put a lot of pressure on myself, so I just thought I'm just going to go in there and do my best, and that's what I did. I mean, your best was good enough. From last year to this year, you've dropped 10 seconds off your PB. That's an amazing achievement. So what's helped you progress? Well, I'm just really determined to be the best I can be. Yeah. Yeah. And I can't wait to see what you do in the future. You know, you've got uh, a lot of your teammates on training camp right now, watching on telly. What do you want to say to them? Thanks for the support. <laughs> we love to see it. Look, congratulations, British champion. Ladies and gentlemen, the incredible Amelie Bloxage. Now, Fleur, it's a tough race of 1500. You know, you, you had Amelie right there. You could see you were chasing her down, but always good to have someone to, to race against in a 15, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely, I think. Emily and I really push each other throughout the races and even when we're not racing each other we see our times and we try to beat that time so on and so on and yeah it's really good to have another person in the 15. Yeah and you know we saw you get the British short course record back in November translating it over to long course it's obviously it's like two different sports but um but you were looking pretty strong out there. Yeah it was it wasn't the time that I was really expecting to go to be honest um I feel like my training kind of shows a bit more than that but um, again it was a really good race for Mamely and yeah I'm happy that it's over to be honest. <laughs> oh, I imagine so look congratulations a silver medal and Michaela I'm just going to pop in here quickly to you. A British bronze medal a great way to start your night. Yeah I'm pretty happy. Yeah so, so talk us through that race for you you know what was your strategy going out in in the 15? Um, I wanted to go out a bit more controlled because I think I've been pushing myself a bit hard too early. Mm. And I just wanted to stay as close to these guys as I could. Yeah. yeah. Well, you did. You got yourself a bronze medal, so congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your British medalists. Well, the medals being presented by Emily's sister. This will be interesting. There she is, look. There's the bronze medal to Michaela Glenister. And the silver to Fleur Lewis. This is fabulous. What a great idea this is. I love this. Have you ever seen this before? You get your medal off your sister? I haven't, but I, I really like it. We saw a few parents presenting yesterday. So it's definitely mixing it up, and it's a very nice idea. <laughs> Look at her face. <laughs> Fantastic. Aww. Fantastic. Isn't that wonderful? Wow. You get your national title medal presented to you by your sister. It's not bad, is it? My sister... My sister got a silver medal at the Olympics and I only got a bronze, so I'm the second best Olympian in my family. That's not great, is it? family, though. Wow. <laughs> your parents. <laughs> I've never forgiven it. <laughs> Get an Olympic bronze medalist. A bronze medal and you're the second best medalist in your family. That's no good, is it? Yeah, that's a tough one. <laughs> Here we go. Men's 200 metres butterfly, the junior final. 
There's the junior final, the B final, and then the big final, the Paris final, the A final. And in this, the fastest seed is Llewellyn Porter. He's already done a consideration time on this 200 meters butterfly. He's in lane number four and five is Edward Marcel Whittles of Chelsea Westminster. So the full lineup: uh, Lander of uh, Mount Kelly in one, Lennox of Aberdeen in two, Fleming East Kilbride three, four is Porter, five is Marcel Whittles of Chelsea Westminster, six is Kinlan of Sheffield, seven Brown of Plymouth, and eight more of Leicester. Two to fly. How many of those have you done? None, absolutely none. Never done it. Really? Not no. even for. I wonder what it feels like. No, no. Training? I've never really been intrigued, actually. We had, um, <laughs> we had Freya Anderson in the commentary box this morning, and she claimed she'd done one because she did one in training. Does uh, that count? Does it count, does it? Uh, I mean, it's more than I've done, so <laughs> I've got to give it to her. <laughs> It isn't, uh, it isn't sensible. If you're not great at turn the fly, it's not sensible at all. But I tell you what, if you want to make a team, not too many people like doing it, so it's worthwhile having a crack, definitely. Take your marks. The junior final of the men's 200 metres butterfly. The well Porter of Camden Swiss Cottage, the fastest seed in lane number four. And five is Edward Marcel Whittles of Chelsea and Westminster, coached by Lisa, Lisa Bates. She'll be one of the Olympic coaches uh, going out to Paris in July. First 50 of the 200 fly. Well, they do talk about easy speed, and the 200 flyers are they're just different animals, aren't they? Always a 100 guy, and you just go up and back and get out, but these guys are totally different. It's a totally different ball game, and like I said, I've never done one. Um, so... It's, it's definitely a painful one, but um, I think the boys in the middle are looking great. Um, Edward Marcel Whittle is coached by Lisa Bates at Chelsea and Westminster. Um, I've done a little bit of work with them, so I know how hard they're working. She runs a great ship over there. Um, really hard training, they have um, an amazing kind of structure set up over there. So I think he's looking really good at 100, and they were both under the European Junior qualifying time this morning, I believe. Yes. Um, so if they can replicate that again tonight, that'd be great. Well, certainly there are two juniors that uh, went under the European consideration time in four and five, that's Porter and Marcel Whittles. But there's, there's another two, one in the B final, that's Charles Simpson, another junior. And there's also one in the A final, uh, Henry Gray. So uh, they, these guys really need to put the hammer down if they're going to get selected for the European juniors because they can take four per country. I'd be a little bit surprised if they do select four in one event, but they're allowed to. Yeah, and I think, like you mentioned earlier, like I think we already have is it 22 um, hitting qualifying times for the European juniors with a maximum team size of 30. So it's definitely going to be tight, but if they can put themselves in a good position to be selected, that'd be great. Well, there was one tenth of a second between these two guys and the heats. The fast of the two at the top of that picture in the white hat was Lewin and Porter. But this is a really good swim from Edward Marcel Whittles of Chelsea Westminster. Lifetime best, 204.41. He's tying up. Oh, my word, that hurts. 204.41. He's just gone 202.55 with uh, Llewellyn Porter second, 202.71. That was a gutsy swim. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Ooh, it really did hurt, that final five. But goodness me, the commitment, the attack. Molly, that was quite something special, wasn't it? Yeah, he really used that speed down the first hundred, and it, it looked like a struggle in the last five metres, but still enough energy to have a little celebration at the end, so that's great. And another massive lifetime best, almost two seconds underneath the time that he set this morning. A great swim from him. Well, that's... Uh, that really is good. That's a, a fine, fine 200 metres butterfly swim, that. Edward Marcel Whittles wins it from Porter in second. Well, there's another junior. Another two juniors still to come. One in this uh, B final and then one in the A final, Henry Gray. Another Chelsea and Westminster swimmer. So, this, the B final of the men's 200 metres butterfly. Rodriguez in one for Swansea, Arch of Cardiff in two, Simpson of Plymouth in three, Van der Leest of Bath in four, George Barber of Sheffield in five with Charlie Broom of Leeds in six. They're having a great meet lead. Seven, Minto, City of Bradford, and then Aaron Fox of City of Sheffield in eight. 
Yeah, as you said, City of Leeds having an amazing, amazing week, coached by Richard Dennigan. He's He's been in Leeds for as long as I can remember. Um, but he's doing a great job up there, and the youngsters especially always seem to perform well here. Well, he's got a fabulous age group programme, he really has. I mean, every single time you see a yellow hat with that shark on of Leeds, it's uh, it's another PB. Yeah, he's, his, his age group programme's amazing. It just seems every time they get in, there's some of the best times. And, yeah, I think a lot of the European junior team this year will be made up of Leeds. Take your marks. Well, the lead swimmer, Charlie Broom, is in lane number six. Fourth fastest uh, seed into this B final of the men's 200 metres butterfly. There in three is a junior. He went 2.025, so he's just seen some really quick times in that uh, junior final. Charles Simpson of Plymouth Leander. He went 2.02.58 in the heats. Lifetime best of 2.02 flat. So uh, interesting to see how he does here in this B final for the men's 200 fly. Probably best start. Right at the bottom there is Aaron Fox in the red hat of City of Sheffield, closest to us. And a good turn in five from George Barber of City of Sheffield. Yeah, George does have the fastest time in this heat, so he has a personal best time of 2 minutes 0.84. He did go at 2.02 this morning. Whether that was a fairly chilled um, heat swim for him to blow off the cobwebs, I'm not sure. But he's looking great here in the middle lane. He's taken it out in first place in a 57.55. So really strong start from him. It'd be interesting to see how he, how he does down these next two lengths. Well, this is uh, where the men from the boys get separated. It's the harder part just when it starts kicking in. You can do the first 100 relatively comfortably, but then the big guys start really picking it up at the 100 metres turn on the two of flight. The secret, if you can, is to stay as flat as possible so you use all your energy to go forward and not to go up to get to air. Try and go as flat as you can. Van der Lees, the fastest seed in lane number four, first to turn with 50 to go. Yeah, and great underwater there from lane five, George Barber, you know, at the, at the last turn of a 200 meter front front, the last thing you want to do is focus on the underwater, but it's key to keep focus on it. Oh, look at this, this is really close, right at the top there, going really well. Antonio Rodriguez of Swansea University, he's finishing well, also in three is Sir Charles Simpson, the junior. And this is a very, very good final 50 from Simpson. Is he going to win it? I think he is, you know, he has. 20189. Wow. Well, the Plymouth Leander swimmer, that is brilliant to tie for first. I, I tell you what, Molly, it's a good job you're here. It really is. You're pointing out uh, the tie for first place. Charlie Broom in lane six and Charles Simpson both going 20189, tying to 1 one hundredth of a second. <laughs> Not often seen, especially over 200 metres. I think that's the first tie. Did we see a tie yesterday? Maybe for bronze, I think. But yeah, definitely the first tie for gold. But great swim there from, from Charles and Charlie. So confirmation of the result of the B final of the men's 200 flight. 201.89, a tie for first, Simpson and Broom. Third was uh, Antonio Rodriguez and fourth, Rudian Arch. Well, in the heats this morning, there were some great swims. One of those was from Joshua Gammon from the University of Bath. And uh, John caught up with Josh after his heat this morning. With uh, last year's British champ, uh, Josh Gammon, a uh, uh, very solid swim there, putting yourself into tonight's final. But of course, between you and uh, Thomas, it's going to be another battle. Yeah, as usual. Um, you know, me and Thomas used to train at um, PL together, so we've got a bit of a friendly rivalry, which is really good. Um, so yeah, he's such a nice guy. You know, and from last year, we sort of moved it on. I saw you out at the Swimming World Cup, so it was amazing to have you there. You've been progressing as we go ahead, and you, you know, working on different things. He said to me, last year at this point, you went 202 in the heats. Here you go on two even. It's got to be nice to see that progression. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, it's, it's, it's definitely a better place than I was last year. Um, and yeah, I can't, I can't complain with an improvement. Exactly, no one can. Well, look, congratulations on that uh, good swim. Good luck tonight, I'll let you go swim down. Well, he swam a really solid heat, he really did. Uh, Josh Gammon qualifying in second fastest for this final. But look at that British record, 154.8. Well, if, uh, if they do that, they will qualify for the Olympic Games, but there's a very, very quick time. The slowest qualifier, Henry Gray, the junior, swam really well to make this final. The 17-year-old, again, Chelsea and Westminster swimmer, coached by Lisa Bates, he's in eight in one. It's uh, Andrew Bertoli of Stirling University. Then uh, Thomas Sansom of Loughborough in seven, with Reese Edwards of Swansea in lane number two. 
but these uh, centre lanes, tactics on two and the fly, I always find really interesting. Do you go for it from the start and have that massive pain at the end, or do you try and back end it and really reel them in when the other guys are, are really hurting? I think it's so individual, and I think for these guys, it kind of will depend on if they're more suited to the 100 on 200. So you have like your Chad Leclose who go out crazy fast and kind of just cling on down the last 50. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see how um, how these guys do it. You can see Josh Gammon just walking out now. And in lane four, our fastest qualifier from this morning is Thomas Beeling, the only qualifier under two minutes. Well, Josh Gammon was... Uh had a quick chat with John earlier on, and we, uh, we saw he was pretty happy with the heat, but um, they really do have to step it up into this final now. Uh, lifetime best of 157 flat for Thomas Beeley, the fastest seed from University of Aberdeen performance. He's got a very wily old coach. Old, I shouldn't say that, should I? A wily coach, Patrick Miley. Wily Miley. <laughs> coach, of course, to uh, Hannah Miley. Commonwealth champion, 400 medley. Olympian, very, very nearly won so many Olympic medals on that 400 bench. She kept on going back and back, forth, forth so many times, amazing. I know, yeah, she's an amazing swimmer. And Patrick's, Patrick's been around for so long, and he's such an old-school, hardcore coach. So I imagine coaching for that 200 fly is perfect for him. <laughs> I know he's listening up there. Uh, well, actually, I think he's down here, actually, isn't he? I think he's here. So I do know that he's been listening, and uh, I think Hannah's coming down tomorrow. Leaving her new little baby with mum. The big final, the Paris final, the men's 200 fly. Fastest seed, Thomas Beeley of Aberdeen in four. Gammon of Bath in five. Take your marks. Such a tough event, this, the men's 200 metres by the fly final. Really good uh, starts right in the centre. The black hat of Josh Gammon. He's allowed 15 metres underwater. And I've got to tell you, he came up right on, the, right on the edge of that. Used the full 15 metres underwater. Really good start from him. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what you have to do. They say underwater is the fastest stroke. If it was a stroke, it would be the fastest. So, yeah, it's interesting to see how these guys are going to um, do on their turns throughout the race. But he's making the most of this turn again. Coming up just before 15 metres, that's a great turn. It is interesting, isn't it? Because uh, spending a long time underwater, particularly at the start of a 200 fly, you, as you say, it is the fastest element of the race, the underwater, which is... It's slightly counterintuitive, isn't it? You think it'd be faster on top, but if you do a great turn, and he's really good at turns, it is faster. Just uh, talk us through this turn here, Molly. Yeah, so obviously on the on the breaststroke and the fly bench, you have the touch turns, um, as opposed to the tumble turns on backstroke and freestyle. But I think what you're looking for on a fast touch turn is ideally from hands to feet being under one second. That's what we used to practice a lot in training, is kind of getting that reaction time and twisting as quickly as you can and being as tight and streamlined. Well, it was a great turn, and he's looking good at the moment. Uh, has he gone out too quickly? Is Thomas Beely going to come back at him on the final 50? I'm sure he will do. It's just whether he's got enough of a lead with 50 metres to go. Gammon leads from Beely in second. Braddock in third. Batoli fourth. Woodward fifth. But uh, another great turn from the black hat of Josh Gammon of Bath in the centre. Yeah, that was great. He split a 30.5 there. So if he can hold something similar, he's on for a massive PB here. Well, the consideration time for the Olympic Games is 1.54.9. That's a massive ask, but he is swimming away from the field, and he does look good here. His lifetime best is 1.58.1. Well, he's going to kill that, I'm sure. Look at this, 1.56.9. Goodness me, 1.2 seconds inside of his lifetime best, just outside of the Olympic uh, nomination time. But that a really great swim from Josh Gammon. And the whole approach to it, the start was great, all of his walls were super, the, the pacing was good, but when he hit that final turn, Molly, he really started swimming away. Yeah, a great technical swim there as well. Like you said, he hit every turn and every underwater amazingly. So I think, like you said, massive PB. Obviously, maybe he was going for that Olympic qualifying time, but that was always going to be a massive ask. So, yeah, I think he'll be happy for that, and he's hopefully got the 100 later this week. And here's the start. Let's uh, see the red uh, lane markers denoting. Oh, look at that. The 15 meter mark must be up before that. 
Yeah, that was close. He's definitely maximizing those underwaters. Um, but that obviously works for him. He's still doing that on the last turn. So, yeah, a great technical swimmer. Um, and I imagine training at the University of Bath, they have amazing facilities down there. So using a lot of the camera work to really try and refine that technique. Look at that. He did swim away from the rest of the field. Head down. Great discipline inside that last uh, five meters as well. So confirmation of the result of the men's 200 metres butterfly. Josh Gammon wins it from University of Bath. Great swim from him. 156.9, super lifetime best. And he is talking to John Mason. Well, I tell you what, what a fantastic race. The two fly, always a tough one. I'm just going to jump in here uh, with you, Josh. Congratulations, British champ. You went out hard there and, and held that to the end, but that last 15 looked like it hurt. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sort of hurt. It hit me on the last 150, sorry, getting to 150. The last 50 sucked, but it's never easy. It's never easy, and I know you, we spoke this morning, it's always a battle between you guys. We had lane eight from the outside as well. Uh, a fantastic race from you, Thomas. Um, you know, you came into that the fastest qualifier uh, and chasing him down for that, for that too. Doing a great performance for a silver medal. Yeah, you know, overall, happy with it. I want well, a bit more, but yeah, it's always yeah. the case. It's always a good race with Josh. We've known each other for a while, so it's, um, yeah, you know, it's always a good race with him. Uh, he, he just went out very fast and it was fair play. And chasing him down the whole way. Oh, yeah, just trying, <laughs> at least. <laughs> and quickly over here, Henry, from the outside lane, from lane eight. Could you see these boys? A little bit. I could see them out of the corner of my eye. I think uh, I kind of just switched on that last 50 and tried to chase them down, but I mean, including myself, I don't think really anyone in this stadium expected me to be up here today with a medal, but, you know, I was kind of surprised myself. I couldn't see myself. I couldn't really see the time on the board. I thought it was a mistake, maybe, but, yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, shout out to my parents and my coaches as well at Chelsea Westminster, but yeah. thank you. Well, I tell you what, it wasn't a mistake. You were a British thank bronze you. medalist. Congratulations. Didn't they do brilliantly, ladies and gentlemen? Give it up for our British medalists. Medals for this one being presented by one of my old Paralympic teammates, Joels Long, triple Paralympic champion, twice a champion in the 100 meters butterfly Paralympic Games in Atlanta and in Sydney, 96 and 2000. He was telling me earlier, it's a, a local, he lives in North Devon now, and his local swimmer is Josh Gammon, and he will be delighted to give the medal. To one of his local swimmers, so great to see Giles here at these championships. Great performances there from the medalist. Excellent stuff from Joshua Gammon. That's what you've got to do. Lifetime best at the trials at the British champion Joshua Gammon. Well, it's a 200 fly down, and now we're into the women's 200 meters breaststroke. And I have to say, what an honour it is to be joined by Molly Renshaw for the whole of this uh, championships. Double Olympian in Rio and Tokyo. Double Olympic finalist, world short course champion on the 200 meters breaststroke. Double European champion. What's, what was your favorite one out of all that lot? Which, which is the one you go, that was a cracker? Um, oh gosh, you put me on the spot. Probably actually qualifying for Tokyo in this pool three years ago. Um, that's where I set my British record. It's the fastest time I've ever gone. And it's the first Olympic trials I've swam and kind of just been relieved after the swim. Um, so yeah, it was kind of pressure off, but it was onto the summer meets. Wow, that's interesting. I was expecting you to choose a major championship, but qualifying for the Olympics is your best race. It's interesting, isn't it? This is the junior final, the women's 200 meters breaststroke. I'm sitting next to the British record holder and Chloe Brown of Mount Kelly, the fastest seed in four. Take your marks. A full lineup for Phoebe Cooper in lane number one, two is a Collier of Repton, three Bressler of Guildford, four and five is Brown of Mount Kelly and Finley of Northumberland and Durham, six uh, Dunn of City of Liverpool, Miles of Seven Oaks and Seven, and Waymond of Maxwell in eight. Yeah, the girls looking great here. You can see this this event is kind of you've kind of got to really style it out and really take as long um, long strokes as possible. It's very important spotting it into the wall because those strokes are so long. From about five meters out, you kind of have to start readjusting. But great turn there from um, Chloe Bowne in lane four, swimming at Mount Kelly. 
Uh, and Molly, it seems to me that of all the strokes, the difference in stroke between the 100 metres and 200 metres racing, freestyle, it's pretty similar. Backstroke, pretty similar. Fly, yeah, pretty similar. Breaststroke, it's a diff just a different, different ball game, isn't it? It's a totally different stroke. Yeah, absolutely. If you, if you compare kind of the straight rates that we're seeing here compared to Adam Peter last night in the 100, it's a completely different ball game. And I think breaststroke's a strange one because you see so many different techniques. Like I, I heard you talking this morning about some people slightly moving to the side or some people coming out higher or staying quite low. Like you see such a variety of techniques in this. And it's really interesting to see what works for everybody. Well, Chloe Brown, it's certainly a bound, certainly working for her from the Mount Kelly students in lane number four, 112 at the 100 metres, and uh, she's still trying to get the maximum out of every stroke. What are you thinking about here? This is uh, coming into the 150 metre turn. I'm guessing right now it's starting to hurt a little bit. What do you need to concentrate on if you're going to go a really good swim? Yeah, I'll definitely be starting to hurt here. I think um, for myself and Dave, our focus is almost getting as much as we can up every single stroke. So on every length, I would count my strokes so that I know if I'm sticking to my race plan, I know exactly how many strokes I need to be doing per length. So for me, that was always kind of like a tick over, but it was always about the focus of holding the water out the front, completing each leg kick, and just trying to ride each stroke as much as you can. Well, she's doing it well in the centre is uh, Chloe Bowne of Mount Kelly. Also coming back at her is Mabby Collier, the Repton swimmer in lane number two, the Welsh junior record holder in this women's 200 metres breaststroke, the 15-year-old up there in two, and she's actually taken the lead. Great swim from her. This really is good. She is a junior. The junior consideration time, 2.33.0. This is a great swim. 2.33.0. She's done it. 2.32.87. That's a fabulous swim from lane two. Wow. Came out of nowhere as well. I think we were focusing too much on the middle lanes, but great last 50 there. I think she is one of two to dip under 40 seconds on the last 50. It's a very impressive finish. Well, that's a fabulous one, I'm guessing, given the fact that she is the Welsh junior record holder, and that is a lifetime best. I'm guessing it's a Welsh record. I apologise, I don't have the Welsh records in front of me. That's a super swim from Mabby Collier, though. Collier wins it, bounds second. Lifetime best from her as well. Third was Miles, fourth Finlay. Kind of this morning, some quick swims here. Well, I'm looking forward to Molly Renshaw commentating on the big final, the uh, A final of the women's 200 metres breaststroke. Will her British record go? They're going to have to go extraordinarily fast in order to get so close to that. What is it, 220, something like that? Yes, 220.8. Something. <laughs> Something, really? You don't know it? That's it amazing. It slipped me. It was a few years ago. <laughs> that's am I'll tell you what, that's extraordinary. Well, there is the fastest seed, Sophie Bassett Brassington of Mount Kelly. Just seen her teammate get second in the junior final. She's also a junior, Sophie Brassington. Started this meet really well. Set a lifetime best to qualify fastest for this B final. She's in four. So Brassington, the fastest seed of Mount Kelly in four, with Theodora Taylor of Torfane in five, 15 year old. In six, it's uh, O'Reilly of Sheffield, seven, Moore of Crawley, and eight, Bobby Robinson of Repton. It's uh, right in the centre. Maybe the best start from Torfane Dolphins, the TD on her white hat, is Theodora Taylor, the 15 year old. Yeah, she looks great. And as you mentioned, Sophie Brassington and Theodora Taylor both hitting the European Junior qualifying times this morning. So tonight's kind of just about getting out there and seeing how fast that they can go. But Taylor in five is really taking it out strong. She, um, no, she looks great. And I think it'd be interesting to see how this pans out. I think we have a few hundred specialists coming up in the next event. So I think it'll be very fast out and it'll be interesting to see how it happens on the last hundred. Well, the youngster, the 15-year-old, Theodora Taylor of Torfang Dolphins. She's done the European uh, junior consideration time already in this women's 200 metres breaststroke. The time in the heat's 2.31.9. She's gone 2.29.1. If she can do that, surely they'll take her for that uh, European junior championships, which is in July. It's in Vilnius in Lithuania. First to turn is Taylor. 
two, a 1.11.25, so she can go pretty quick off a 1.11. She can go a lifetime best, certainly. She looks good here, starting maybe to swim away a little bit on this third 50. Yeah, she's definitely pulling away. And I think the thing is with breaststroke, once you kind of get that momentum, you can feel yourself pulling away. You kind of just start building that momentum over and over each stroke. So if she can keep riding that wave into this last turn, get a great turn up strong out of the pullout, then I think this is going to be a really fast time. Well, I was wondering whether she might have gone a little bit quickly down that first 50, but she's built it very well, the final turn, 150.6 at the 150 turn. Let's see how she turns. Not bad, a good turn from uh, Sophie Brassington of Mount Kelly. One lane up from her in the yellow uh, lanes, and she's starting to catch a little bit now. Yeah, and that last turn of a 200 pressure is so painful, trust me. It's such an oxygen-depriving stroke. So that last turn, nailing that full pull-out, is really going to take it out of them. And also charging in the silver hat is uh, Maya Hall of Northumberland and Durham in lane number two, but uh, still holding on, holding on well. This is a really impressive swim from the youngster. 15-year-old Theodora Taylor is going to win the B final of the women's 200 meters breaststroke. She does the time 230.37. A very good swim from her. Well, the whole way she attacked it from the start, it was very, really impressive. Very impressive indeed. Taylor wins the B final. Second was uh, Maya Hall up there in lane number two. Sophie Brassington was third. And I think right on her lifetime best, Sophie Brassington. Set a lifetime best to qualify. There we go. So confirmation of the result then of the B final. Theodora Taylor wins it with Hall second, Brassington third, and Amy Crowley of City of Cardiff fourth. Well, in the heats this morning, there's some very quick swims, including from uh, Gillian Davy and Cara Hanlon. And John Mason caught up with them after their heats this morning. Gillian, of course, last year, British champion, there was 0 0.05 between the two of you. It's going to be another battle tonight. For sure. I'm super excited to be here and to race Cara. Um, it's just a privilege to be here. Um, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm grateful. Well, I'm excited as well. I can't wait to see you do it. And Cara, we were just talking, you know, it's a tough one for the women's breaststroke program because you start on that two breast. You're saying it's an awful way to start, but you get it out of the way. Definitely. I think the heat of the tundra breast is always the worst one. So we're through that now. I think we just have to enjoy the rest of the meet, really. Well, look, I'm going to let you swim down at fastest qualifier tonight. Go and put on a show. Good luck. And hopefully I'll be chatting with you afterwards. Well, they're both in this final. They're in lanes three and four. Gillian Davy, the defending champion, is in lane three. Has a really strong second hundred. And Cara Hanlon, well, she swims it quite differently, doesn't she, Cara Hanlon, in lane number four? Yeah, we've, we've got a few girls in this in this race who probably are slightly more suited to the hundred. So I think we can expect to see Angrid, Cara, Sienna, um, maybe a couple of others take it out pretty strong. And hopefully, I think Lily Bucker can bring it back quite fast. That's interesting. The tactics here, do you try and go out uh, quickly and try and steal it from the front, or do you uh, try and stay on the shoulders of the faster guys and then overtake them on that uh, third and fourth 50? And Greg Evans, well, there's been quite a lot of chat about her maybe having a go at the, uh, the British record, your British record, on that 100 metres breaststroke later in the week. That'd be interesting to see. Yeah, and I, to be honest, I think she has a great chance, I think. A few weeks ago at the Edinburgh International, she was very close. So it would be great to see her do it. It's always good to kind of have that depth for the relay as well. We just saw Gillian Davy in lane three. There's Sienna Robinson in five. Multiple European junior finalist in 2021, 22, 23. And here's the fastest seed right in the centre, Cara Hanlon of University of Edinburgh. She's going in lane number four. And I'm sure she'll be having a crack at the Scottish record, which is 224-0, held by Kirsty Balfour since 2006, 18 years ago. That's quite something, isn't it? Gillian Davy in three. Her dad, John, was British Olympian. And her mum, Kate, a very good uh, university college from somewhere out in the States, somewhere in Indiana and uh, living in Iowa. So the defending champion in three. Carl Hannon, the fastest seed in four. Sienna Robinson looked really good in the heats in five. Who's your favourite? Oh, I, I think I'm going to go for Cara. <laughs> It'll be interesting. Tactically, it's going to be fascinating. Take 
your marks. It is the big final, it's the Paris final, the women's 200 meters breaststroke. The time they're looking for is incredibly quick, 2.23.04. It'll be a huge lifetime best from any of these swimmers if they can do it, but they certainly can. They're capable, and this has been a very fast meet so far. We saw Adam Peaty go 57.9 on the 100 meters breaststroke for men. What can these women do on the 200? I think this race could honestly be anyone's, but great start up in, in lane two from Angrid Evans. I think we knew that she was going to take it out fast. Like we said, she is a threat to that 100 meter British record later this week. So she kind of has to take it out fast and see how it pans out down the next 100. But I think this race is going to chop and change quite a bit over the next um, two and a half lengths. Well, I think if uh, the defending champion, Gillian Davies, is going to win it, she's in three, one lane closer to us with that white hat. If she's going to defend her uh, championship title, she's got to be right on the shoulders of the leaders. I think at 100, she's a little bit behind at the moment. She's more on the feet of Angered Evans, but Evans in two does go out very fast. And I've got to say that Cara Hanlon is very well placed in lane four at the 100 turn. Evans first, Hanlon second, Davy third. They're all sub one minute ten, but it's one and eight and hundred. That's quick. That is, it is very quick. I'm excited to see what she's going to do down this third fifty. I think this could really set the pace for the last fifty. But she's looking great. To be fair, they're not really catching her. I think Cara will probably make her move on this fifty, and then we'll see the others maybe coming back slightly on the last fifty. Well, Evans is holding on well at the moment. This looks very good indeed for her hundred. She's a more of a hundred specialist than a two hundred, but she's still looking really good. 50 metres to go, one length left in this final of the women's 200 breaststroke. And now Cara Handlin starting to come through a little bit, starting to catch up a little bit in lane four. Good turn as well from Davy in three, but Evans still leading in two. Evans is still leading, that's a great 50 from Cara though. She was nearly half a second faster than, than Angrid, so I think she's taken over and I think Cara might get this one. Well, she's the Scottish record holder on the 50 metres breaststroke. Is Cara Hanlon in the centre? She's the Scottish record holder on the 100 metres. Can she break the Scottish record on this 200? That's uh, still held by Kirsty Balfour at 2.24. She's going to be national champion, though. What a great swim, a super swim it was. Look at that, 2.24.5, just outside the Scottish record, but an outstanding swim, a new lifetime best. And the champion is Cara Hanlon of University of Edinburgh. A really great swim, paced it beautifully. She did, such a strong last 50 as well. Also amazing last 50 from Lily Booker out in, um, in lane six. She came back in a 37-0 and I think that's a very small PB for her. Well, tactically very interesting. Angred uh, Evans in lane number two, went off very quickly. The start there, well, not much of a muchness off the, off the wall. And that's a really long, rangy stroke of uh, Gillian Davy in lane three. Well, she swam really well, came back fast, ended up uh, in third place, 2.26.2, just outside her lifetime best. Uh, but the speed, the early speed of Angred Evans, who ended up in fourth place, 2.26.3, just tied up a little bit, but showed great speed down that first 150. But what a super swim that was, Cara Hanlon, University of Edinburgh wins the Paris final with the women's 200 metres breaststroke. And those medalists now will be talking to John Mason. Well, I tell you what, Cara, I'm going to jump in here with you first. And Garrett went out in that race like an absolute shot, and you had a lot of ground to make up in that final 50. Head down and went. It looked like it hurt, but you did it. Yeah, I kind of just hoped I had a wee bit left on last, last, last 50. And yeah, I'm a wee bit disappointed with the time, but I gave it my everything, so that's all I could do. You know, you said to me, we were talking earlier today, and it was sort of about finding that confidence in yourself and just knowing that you can do it. Um, is coming into that race, what was going through your mind? Yeah, I was nervous. <laughs> um, it's obviously amazing to be in this kind of facility and doing this kind of race. So it's great practice and it's nice to do it alongside all the girls. Of course, and I know, you know you've been a 50 and a 100 British champion. You can now add two to that as well. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Cara Hanlon. <laughs> Elizabeth. <laughs> That was a big race, but you got out of that pool all smiles. Yeah, I'm really happy. Like, that's the fastest I've been for a while now, so I've had a rough start to the year with glandular fever. So to put something like that down, I'm really happy. 
And coming back from something, you know, like glandular fever, it's a tough thing to do, but stepping out here onto a platform like this, with a crowd like this and a venue like this, uh, sort of on the British stage, does that help motivate you and drive you on? Definitely, like the crowd here tonight is amazing. Like the stands are packed, so yeah, it's the best feeling. Well, all smiles, congratulations, a silver medal, well done. And over here, Gillian, finishing with the bronze, it was a tough race. Uh, honestly had no idea how that was gonna go right to the touch. Right, I'm just so grateful for being here. I'm grateful to my family for supporting me. Um, thankful to, sorry, thankful okay. for Ian at Lefra and my coach, Ray Luz. He took a chance on me this year and it's been my favorite year of swimming ever. So thank you for that. Yeah, well, we love that and the chance works. Congratulations, a bronze medal, well done. Ladies and gentlemen, what an incredible race. Give it up for your uh, British medalists. Molly Renshaw, British record holder, and my co-commentator presenting the medals there to Gillian Davy, the bronze medalist, the silver medalist. Maybe Booker. Maybe Booker swam really well. Massive lifetime best for her. That's a super swim. 225.7. And having uh, had the Angela Fiends to come back, that's a super swim. And Cara Hanlon, well, she's getting very close to adding the 200. Scottish record to her 50 and 100 Scottish record and an excellent lifetime best from her well if she continues this what can she do in the 100 Angrid Evans looked very good to 150 she could well break the British record but I've got to tell you Carl Hamlin looks super so Molly Renshaw presenting those medals her British record is still very safe on the 200 I'm not sure about that 100 looking forward to seeing that later in the week the junior final now, the men's 100 metres backstroke. Dean Fern of Aberdeen Dolphins. The youngest in the race is the fastest seed. He goes in lane number four. Achieved the European junior qualifying time in the heats uh, this morning of 56.4, swung really well. European junior consideration time 56.7. He went 56.4. Swung a lifetime best to do that. So, Dowdu of Kingston upon Hull in lane one, Thompson of Mount Kelly two, Whittle of Derby in three, Fern of Aberdeen in four, Cherrington Millfield five with his teammate Godsell in six, Ubertali of Chelsea Westminster in seven and Dodds of Leicester Sharks in eight. The B final, the junior final I should say, junior final, and the men's 100 backstroke. These are the fastest eight juniors in Britain. There's no, no juniors in the A final or the B final. This is it. Take your marks. Well, two of these swimmers in the heats uh, achieved the consideration time for the European Junior Championships on the 100 backstroke. And well, probably pretty important if they can get the touch here because uh, they will be selecting relays for the European juniors. I don't think they'll be selecting specific swimmers just for a relay, but if you do make the team, certainly uh, Great Britain got a cracking chance of getting medals at the European juniors. And down this first 50, well, right in the centre there in lane number four, really good first 50 from the youngster. That's Dean Fern, the 16-year-old, nine national age group records he holds and a really good turn, super turn. Look at that, really lovely high still head. And a decent turnover, much faster turnover, one lane closer to us is Connor Cherrington of Millfield School. But at the moment it is still Dean Fern, his lifetime best he set in the heats this morning at 56.47. It's going to be tight, is he diving for the wall? 56.47, 56.10, another 0.37 of a second lifetime best for the winner of the junior final of the men's 100 metres backstroke. And a great swim in second place as well from Connor Cherrington. Really good swim from him, 56.3 to get second. So, 56-1 wins it, 56-3 second for Cherrington, Whipple third, 56-7. Top three under 57 seconds. And with a junior qualifying consideration time of 56.7, 56.72. The first two swimmers doing that, George Whipple just outside of that time. So that was the uh, junior final. 
Now the B final and there's some quick guys in here, I've got to say, including right in the centre. A little bit of a surprise, Cam Brooker, fastest seed, was on the British team to the World Championships in uh, Doha earlier this year. His lifetime best, 53-9. Well, I don't think you can qualify for the Olympic Games in a B final, but it would be very interesting to see how fast he does go. So Cameron Brooker from Bath Performance. I think the uh, selection policy is that you have to be in the A final and you have to win the race in a time underneath the consideration time in order to actually go. So this is the B final, but I wouldn't be too surprised if uh, Cameron Brooker, we see a little bit of an angry swim. He didn't quite make the final, just missed out. He's in lane four. Wouldn't be too surprised if he goes very quick here. Yeah, and I think he's, he's probably a little bit disappointed with that heat swim, so definitely something to prove here. Take your marks. B final, the men's 100 metres backstroke, and Cam Brooker right in the centre, the fastest seed from Bath performance. Missing out on the big final by one one hundredth of a second. Such are the tiny margins on world swimming, but let's see how he does here. His lifetime best 53 9, and he's gone out quick in the red hat in the centre. Yeah, he looks great, and he'll definitely have a 200 later this week as well. So, although he'll be frustrated with this, hopefully he can put it behind him and move on to the 200. Well, he's out well, he's out first, he's out fast, he's out in 26 24. Just 13 one hundredths behind is uh, Scott Gibson in lane number five. But a really good turn from uh, the red hat of Cameron Brooker right in the centre. And let's see how close he can get to that uh, 54 second. His lifetime best, 53.94, and he looks very good here. He's got about 10 metres to go. Just going under the flags now, five to go. Can he get close to 54 seconds? Diving for the wall. What time has he gone? 54.4. So uh, much better, much better. 55.0 in the heats this morning. 54.4 in that final, in that B final. And that's better, and that uh, bodes much, much better for that 200 later in the week. Yeah, definitely an improvement on the heats. It would have been interesting to see what he could have done in that main final, I think. It's, it's such a stacked final, and I think having that kind of atmosphere and having your teammates around you, I think he could have potentially gone a little bit faster. So there's the uh, confirmation of the results. Uh, Brooker winning it. And uh, winning it well from uh, Speakman and Somerset. Well, this morning in the heats, there was some uh, really good swimming in the para events, and John caught up with uh, Stephen Clegg after his heats this morning. Well, uh, congratulations. That was a massive swim for you this morning, Stephen. Obviously, coming in here, you look like you're going out there full of confidence, knowing exactly what you need to do. Yeah, you know, this morning was just about setting up for the final. Yeah. Uh, I had a really good hit out a few weeks ago at Edinburgh, um, so we're feeling pretty good coming into this meet, and, you know, I just... Uh, going to see how far we can get, how close we can get to that world record tonight. Yeah, oh, well, I tell you what, I'd love to see it. Hope you do it. You know, it's going to be a big summer. Paralympics coming up. You know, you're one of the more experienced athletes uh, kicking around to, on, on the power side of things. Does that sort of take away from some of the pressure or add to it, knowing, you know, you've been here before and you've got to do it again? Yeah, it's, it's, over the years, I feel like my position in the T GB teams uh, evolved over the years. Like, going in in 2016, I was a novice, didn't know, really know much about the sport. Now. Eight years later, I'm one of the most senior athletes on the team and got a fair few medals uh, to my name now, which is really nice. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, there is some pressure to be, in the, I guess, one of the leader figures of the, of the program, but also like, I've got a job to do, and at the end of the day, it's still 50 meter pool. It doesn't change, so, you know, we've got to do what you do. Do what you do. I hope you do it tonight. I can't wait. Maybe we'll be chatting again after the race. There is the call-up room, and we do have a broken lane rope in the pool here. See the swimmers about to come out there, but they're going to have to reset themselves because we might be a little bit delayed. Haven't had many technical malfunctions, but we've had a couple. I think that's the second one. 
I forget, Andy, we're only just in the second day, aren't we? We are. So I have to say, I'm not sure I've ever been at a major meet where there's been a, a lane line break, uh, broken, but... Um, broke? <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's the second time. It does take a little bit of time to replace it. And I'm uh, not quite sure what they're going to do here because um, the lane lines are actually stored underneath the, uh, the poolside and there's, um, there's some staging where normally you take the... Yeah, nice that. Anyway, uh, here you go. There's your, there's your race. There's your races. Yeah, it's uh, stacked with S14s, this one. S14s, swimmers with an intellectual impairment, but one of the favourites for this one, the favourite, will be Stephen Clegg, the S12 swimmer from Edinburgh University. He's a swimmer with a visual impairment. Just uh, around about a month ago, he set a new British record, 59.50, a world record which has stood since 2012 Paralympic Games, 59.35. 15 one hundredths of a second shy he was of that world record. And we heard him talking to John Mason a little bit earlier. And the world record could be a target for Stephen Clegg tonight. So the classifications for these para events, S1 to S10, those are physical impairments, with S1 being the more severe impairments and S10 being the least impaired. S11 to 13, those are visual impairments. So the S11s are the ones who swim with black out goggles. They have no or very little vision. And the 12s and 13s are those with uh, partial vision. And 14s are those with intellectual impairments. A lot of these in this final tonight, and the final will be decided. The British champion will be decided on para swimming points. So the points are based on the percentage of that class's world best time. So the world best time in the last two years. If you achieve that, you will get a thousand points. And the swimmers that are closest to that, or even in excess of that world best time, will claim the gold medal. So it's all about the points in terms of the medals, but in terms of qualification, it's all about the times, of course. There's Ellie Simmons. Well, the great Paralympic champion who's been on, on duty this week. <laughs> she's got a new sport, I think, Andy. She's firing blanks, I've got to tell you. She's had two <laughs> goes already, and they've gone about three yards so far. Come on, Ellie. There you there go. There we go. Well, she's had some successes in this pool. <laughs> <laughs> two fails, but she's got it on the third attempt. Oh, oh goodness, no. look at this. Oh, schoolboy over there. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> They're pulling the lane line out, but, uh, oh, my goodness oh, me. Well, no. I don't know how many of those uh, lane floats there are in the pool, but there's an awful lot of them. They've got to be very careful here because there's probably about another 200 on that lane line already. It's going to take a long time, this. Well, I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen a lane rope break like that ever, I don't think. No, I haven't either. And there's a new lane line coming out. You can just see on the side of the pool, on the left-hand side there, about a third of the way down. So Ellie's... Uh, She's got a lot of T-shirts to shoot out into the crowd here. They've got to really shove it down there. Let's see how she does here. Come on, Ellie. Back, back row. Back row. Oh! <laughs> oh well. It's like oh, it's a knockout, again. isn't it? Do you remember it's a knockout? It's like that. It's, it's the full rouge. You're, sure, you're showing your age now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Come on. Oh, she's, she needs to change the gun. She's yeah. been given a dud. I think oh, her mum and dad are in the crowd tonight. I think I saw them there. She's aiming for the mum and dad, I think. Gracious, oh, she nearly shot me. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> hey, that's enough of that. Come on, Simmons. <laughs> Get your act she, together. She might be a superstar in the pool, but... There's <laughs> you. Can you see I've got a bit of T-shirt <laughs> mark on my forehead. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Uh... Well, I think they, they, they're sorting out this lane line. I think it's going to be another five or ten minutes or so, to be honest, because there's quite a lot of uh, little floaty bits still in the pool. And they've got to put the new lane line in, but uh, somebody's got to get in there and whip out those extra floats. This is not going to be good for the athletes about to come on for this final, but you know, they're experienced. They've experienced delays before. They should be able to cope with this. Uh, the finals. We'll just have a look at the para classifications. John Mason spoke to Ellie Simmons a little bit earlier. 
So this week at the Aquatics GB Swimming Championships, we are combining both the para swimming and the AB swimming. We have the Olympics and the Paralympics coming up over the summer, and these are the trials for both events. But what that means is uh, those at home who have may never seen a para event, we're very, very lucky to have the incredible Ellie Simmons with us. You're here with us all week, Ellie. Yes, I am. I'm so excited. Cannot wait. I cannot wait. And for mm -hmm. those at home who have never seen something, why don't you start by telling us uh, about the classifications? Yeah, so there are 14 classifications in para swimming. S1 to S10 is physical impairment. The lower the number, the greater the impairment. There's also three visual impairment classifications, S11, S12, S13, and also S14, which is intellectual impairment. So there's many different classifications and here this week unlike uh, at a major we will be swimming multi-classification events um, which work a little bit differently so these guys swimming this week will be looking at getting the point system so a thousand points means they're the closest to the world record so you could finish fourth you could finish last you could finish first it's all about the finish who's greater to the points who's nearer to the points means close to the world record. Of course, so the finish of those races are gonna look a little bit different. We have to wait until the final swimmer has touched the wall to see who is gonna be taking the title and of course, who is gonna be going to Paris over the summer. Thank you so much. Thank Hopefully, you. that has made it a little bit clearer for everyone at home, but do not fret. We're gonna be here guiding you through all the info throughout the week. Well, we've uh, got a little bit of a delay here. There you can see the all those little uh, pieces of ley line that are normally threaded on the metal wire. They eat all the waves, so every single one is, uh, is single. And the reason is because as a swimmer passes them, every single one just, it can turn a little bit, and it's got little plastic uh, pieces going sideways, so it can eat the wave. So when you go up the pool, there's a great big wave that uh, follows all the swimmers, the wake. And then when you come back, you want it as smooth as possible, and those uh, lane lines, they, uh, they eat the waves. So I think uh, back, to, back to the studio and back to John. Well, I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, things happen in live sports. These things do happen, I suppose, Molly. Um, lane ropes, though, that's a new one. And that's two in two days. Like, I don't think I've actually seen this at a major meet before. Um, but yeah, it might throw them off a little bit behind there, but it's all about just keeping composed. Like, for me in the quorum, I love being relaxed. I love having a chat. So if they can kind of just stay within their zone, whether they're listening to music, visualizing their race, and just extending it by about 10 minutes. And I think, you know, it's already nerve-wracking enough, right? These athletes are here at these Olympic trials. It's got to be the biggest race for some of them that they've ever had in their careers. So to be able to maintain that composure, like you say, and keep things calm really is a true skill. It really should, comes to show sort of uh, the professional athlete. How Can they step up to that plate? Can they, can they keep calm? under this sort of pressure because it happens at a world level it happens at an olympic level yeah absolutely anything can go wrong and i think it's best that they're having the practice here so that it's not before an olympic final or a world final so yeah anything can be thrown at them so it's a little bit of a curveball but just see how they handle it and hopefully there'll still be some faster <laughs> well look uh, it does seem to me yes we are ready to go, ladies and gentlemen, and back to the program. Uh, it is back over to Andy and Molly in commentary. And let's crown some more British champions. Well, thanks, John. There's Sam Downey going to lead them out here. The East Lothian swimmer, the S8 swimmer world championship bronze medalist. There is the start list. Well, we'll see what these swimmers can do. Have they coped with that delay? It's not been too long in the end. Maybe about 10 minutes or so, so that's not too bad. Sam Downey makes his way out to that lane number eight. He would be looking for a qualification standard of 106.54. Stephen Clegg, well, we'll see if he has the world record in his grasp tonight. 59.50, the British record, 59.35, the world record. 
There's Louis Lawler. City of Glasgow. We saw Cameron Vernecombe coming out as well. Luke Batty in the outside lane. There's Stephen Clegg. Well, what can Stephen do? One minute point six three in the qualification heats this morning. He'll be hoping to go a little bit faster than that tonight. Mark Tom set goes in lane number five. He was second fastest into this one, the S14. Behind the fastest qualifier, William Ellard, just over the one minute mark. Ellard, Tom Set, and Clegg already achieved those nomination times. But they will be hoping just to cement those times tonight in the final. See if they can dip under the one minute mark, all of them on the one minute point. Stephen Clegg went under that one minute mark. He is the world champion. Won that world title last year in Manchester in the summer. Ellard was also in that world championship team. Took a gold medal in the relay. And Tom Set, the newcomer, trying to make it to his first major international. Louis Lawler, medalist on the world stage. Back in 2019, when the world championships were right here in this pool. He will be hoping to go a second or so quicker to dip under that qualification standard. Now three swimmers per event, per classification. So Louis Lawler, William Ellard, Mark Thompson, all in the same S14 class. Stephen Clegg in the S12 class. And keep an eye on Sam Downey in the outside lane to see if he can improve his time from the heats as well, the world bronze medalist from last year. Oh, Stephen Clegg off to a great start using all that underwater technique. Good start also from Mark Thompson from Bolton Metro. And as, as they get into their stroke now, Ellard with a very good backstroke technique there, bringing him alongside Clegg. So it's the big three in the middle. Can they dip under that one minute mark if they can? They could be on for some records here. Ellard, 28.67. Clegg has gone almost exactly the split that he went to set that British record a month ago in Edinburgh and Clegg and Ellard. Look at the technique from Ellard. Look at the power that he is coming back in. William Ellard really stretching away from the rest of the field. Clegg maybe in second, Tom Set in third. Also going well, the blue cap of Louis Lola, but it is going to be Ellard. What a second 50 that he has swum. And Ellard is under the one minute mark. It is a national record for William Ellard. Clegg just over the one minute mark, as was Tom Set and Louis Lawler, 101.19. Well, it was an improvement from this morning, but the 101 was maybe just outside the qualification standard, only by 0.3 of a second. But three swimmers there who set the qualification standard are inside that qualification mark. Well, what a great swim from William Ellard. But we did think that Clegg may have hit that lane rope, the visually impaired swimmer. That's an occupational hazard for the visually impaired swimmers, I'm afraid. Uh, the turns and the lane ropes. He saw him hit the lane rope this morning. And we think he might have done the same again tonight. As they went down the halfway point, Ellard had the lead and he seemed to stretch away in the second 50. But Clegg had a little bit of a fight with the lane ropes and that let Ellard go ahead. Excellent time there for Ellard. And that is a national record for William Ellard, 59.60. But the points, I think, will go to Stephen Clegg. 960 points for Clegg. He will claim a nomination time, as will Ellard in second place. And Mark Tomset in third place, just ahead of Louis Lawler. Top three claiming the nomination times, and we, they will be with John. Well, I tell you what, back into it, Stephen. A long wait for you guys there, but you hit that time, that consideration time for uh, the Paralympics in Paris. You must be feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, no, I'm happy with the time. A uh, bit annoyed at myself, because I exactly think I probably did about 104 meters there, but, uh, you know, um, yeah, some some room to improve there, I think, still, but uh, happy overall, the time is decent. And I know you said to me, you know, you swim uh, in a category of vision impairment, that swimming in different pools around the world sometimes affect that, sort of the roof on this building, having to try and steer clear of that lane rope. I saw you hit it and I thought, well, what's going to be going through his mind? 
Yeah, there wasn't uh, very many, many nice words being said in my head there. Uh, <laughs> uh, this pool is especially difficult with the bright lights and the angles of the lighting and stuff like that for me. But uh, no, you you got to deal with the environment you're in, and uh, hopefully I can be better in the future. And you know, I'm still shy off that world record still, and you know, it's something to work towards for World Paris. So. Yeah. Keep me hungry. Well, I can't wait to see what you do there, mate. And you know what? I, that world record is right in those yeah. sides. <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, William. You went under that time as well. A fantastic race. Oh, uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, second 50 hurt my legs a lot. Uh, hit the lame rope a couple of times, but yeah, it was quite good at the end. Yeah, very happy with that. Look, congratulations, a silver medal. And Mark. Getting out here, a big smile, yeah. a good race for you. Yeah, a bit disappointed on my turn, but it is what it is, really. Yeah. Well, you did it and you got yourself a bronze medal, so congratulations. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your Para Paris finalist, medalist. And there are the medalists marked on set. Wasn't inside the nomination time tonight in the final but he was in the heats this afternoon so he will be pleased with that it's a national record for william allard in the s14 classification and stephen clegg well world record survives for another day i'm sure the world champion in this 100 batch truck in the s12 class will be gunning for that come paris they've all achieved their nomination times these three medalists in great shape to be in the Paralympic team later this year. So the uh, big final, here it is, the men's 100 metres back, backstroke Paris final. Jack Sherry goes in lane number eight, eighth fastest seed into this final with Charlie Brown of Loughborough in lane number one. And then Jonathan Adam in seven. Well, he's quick. He's a lifetime best of 53.4. He goes in lane number seven. And Brody Williams as well, the Commonwealth champion on the 200 backstroke. He's going in lane number two. And the Olympic bronze medalist on the 200 meters backstroke, Luke Greenbank, goes in lane six. He has been the lead-off leg for that uh, medley relay for many, many years. But now he's being challenged. Matt Ward of University of Bath is in lane three. There he is. And Jonathan Marshall. Well, he's giving that, uh, that uh, University of Florida, the big gator, clap as he comes out. Swims in, uh, in Florida. Got a British coach, Jack Shiranik. And now Ollie Morgan. What a, what a heat he swam. Incredible. Second fastest British swimmer in history. Swam underneath the uh, consideration time for the Olympic Games in 53.68. He went 52.8. 52.8. What a heat that was. So, such a good heat swim, you know. He's only 0.14 off of Liam Tancock's British record. Liam Tancock obviously held the world record at one point on the 50 as well. So that's the kind of level of standard we're working at here. So. A lot of boys that could dip, potentially dip under this qualifying time, so it's just about who's going to get the hand on the wall first. Well, it's also fabulous news, not just for the individual qualifiers. If, uh, if these guys can go under that 53-6 and book themselves a seat on Eurostar to Paris later on this year for that Olympic Games, but also the lead-off of the medley relay, if we can have a 52 low in that, 52 mid, then you've got PT, then you've got two cracking flyers to choose from. Jacob Peters or maybe a Jimmy guy and then freestyles. Well, who knows who's going to get that, but they're all really quick. The final of the men's 100 metres backstroke. Ollie Morgan in lane five, in lane four. Can he break a 15 year old British record of Liam Tancock? Take your marks. The final of the men's 100 metres backstroke, the Paris final, the big final, and Morgan in four from the University of Birmingham with Jonathan Marshall in five. And it's a very good start right in the centre. Yeah, great start there from the Red Hat, Molly Morgan. I think he'll take so much confidence from that swim this morning. And I think, I think the British 
Scottish record is on the threat here. Well, Morgan's gone off very fast indeed. Uh, 12 months ago, we won the uh, British Championship on the 50, the 100 and the 200. Look at that, a really good turn for Marshall, though. Marshall just come off the, the American uh, College Nationals, and that was a super turn in the blue hat. Yeah, and I think you'd expect that coming from a short, um, short course yard swimmer. That underwater is always amazing, but it's coming close into the final 15. Well, it's about 10 metres to go, and Ollie Morgan just ahead in the red hat, but coming back is Jonathan Marshall. This is going to be tight. Who gets the touch? It is Ollie Morgan, 52.70, 52.7. It is a new British record. He's broken Liam Tancock's 15-year-old British record. Look at that. Look what it means to him. Not only is it a British record and a national title, but he's booked himself a place on Eurostar on the British team to the Olympic Games 2024. That's a fabulous swim. And the second place finisher, Jonathan Marshall, also gone under the nomination time, so he could well go as well. Absolutely, big PBs from both the boys there. Johnny Marshall's last 50 was the fastest in the entire field, so that's looking really exciting for his 200 later in the week. 52-7, that is exciting. And if, if we can improve enough, I'm already asking him to improve at the Olympics because he's going to the Olympics. Molly, he's going to the Olympics, Ollie Morgan in the centre. Utterly brilliant. I talked to him just after the heats this morning. And he said he was quite surprised how fast he went in the heats. He's just gone faster. I know, and I think this is just going to be confidence for him throughout the week. I'm pretty sure he'll have the 200 later this week. I think last year at the British Champs, he won the 1500 and the 200. So taking confidence from last year into the World Championships, and he's just improving every time he swims. Look what it means to him as well. Oh, my goodness me. Well, don't sit on the lane line, please. We don't need that to happen again. But look at that. Oh, what a swim. Super swim. That is properly world class. That is outstanding. Ollie Morgan, national champion, new British record holder on the 100 metres backstroke. Who would have thought that coming into these championships? 52.70. Marshall second, Greenbank third. Can't wait for the interview with the... Uh, with John, this is going to be fascinating to listen to. It gives me great pleasure to say this for the first time tonight. Ollie Morgan, you are off to Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for Ollie Morgan! Ollie, your first Olympics. What's gone through your mind? A lot of emotion. Um, you know, we've done a lot of hard work. You know, it's been really tough, but I've enjoyed every step of the way. Um, and yeah, to come away with a British record as well, I. Yeah. It's, been a, it's been in the works for a while. You know, we've been dropping time every time I swim, basically, so I'm super happy. I mean, as you should be, mate. You know, you, you came here last year and sort of did that three-peat, hit all those backstroke uh, gold medals, and then stepped up onto the world stage. You know, I've watched you at Worlds, we've seen you at different events around there, and really held your own. There's a confidence in you now, and we saw it happen tonight. Yeah, I just love racing, you know. Like, people, as Adam said, you know, people can shrink in the arena. I kind of come alive. You know, I love it. I love coming in, racing. It's nice to have a load of fans here. My family's here. Everyone's supporting at home. You know, Gary, my coach, everyone else from Birmingham Uni, you know, it wouldn't be possible without them. Yeah. So, yeah, credit to them. Well, look, I loved watching you do it. Ladies and gentlemen, get up for your new British record holder, Oliver Morgan. And gentlemen as well, look, congratulations. Thank you. A fantastic swim this morning. You came back in and replicated it there. Hit that nomination time, so put yourself in a good position in front of the selectors. That's got to feel pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, it feels good. Uh, you know, I'm excited for this summer and what it holds. Um, excited to actually train long course meters and not just short course yards. So, you know, I think it was a great race, and uh, yeah, I'm really excited, so. Well, if you're doing that after short course yards, I can't wait to see you get some training into you. Congratulations, a silver medal. And Luke, how you doing, mate? Thank you. Good. Um, you know, the 100, I know you've got your favorite event later on in the week, the 200, but that was sort of a great way to blow off those cobwebs. You were looking smooth out there. Yeah, um, 200 has been the main focus all year, but that's the first time I've been 53 since, I think, 2022, so really happy with that. Um, yeah, just looking forward to the 200 now. It's kind of giving me a bit of confidence and yeah, bring it on. Well, look, I can't wait to see you do that. Congratulations, mate. Didn't they do brilliantly? Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for your British medalists and your new British record holder, Oliver Morgan. Off to Paris. So the medal 
Wales being presented by, represented from the uh, National Lottery. And I've got to tell you, he must feel like he's won the lottery, mustn't he? Ollie Morgan, not only a new lifetime best, national champion, a new British record, but I'm sure all of that eclipsed by the fact that he's just booked himself a slot on the British team to the Olympic Games in 2024 in Paris in July later this year. What a swim. He swam it so well as well, didn't he? Was, the whole pace was good, the whole thing, he, he wasn't out too fast, he wasn't back too slow, just the whole thing was just about perfect. Yeah, no, really strong performance there from Ollie, and I'm sure he'll sit down with his coach after this and review it, and there'll definitely be little things that he can tweak, um, tweak to improve on on this summer, so just really exciting to be honest, he's got so much potential, and like he's 20 years old, so so much ahead of him. Well, he really does. Luke uh, Greenbank just going past us. Interesting that um, he hasn't gone a 53 for a couple of years, so that's good for his 200 metres backstroke later in this week. But straight into the next race, it is the women's 100 metres backstroke, the junior final. And the fastest seed is Amber Rigg from Cockermouth. And there's the guys just going through those medals. That is a silver medalist on that 100 metres backstroke, Jonathan Marshall. Swims in uh, Florida. His coach there, Jack Shuranek, a British national team member, part of the Shuranek dynasty. <laughs> yeah, Mark. Um, Mark's made many teams over the years, especially Scottish teams from Commonwealth Games. So, yeah, definitely following in the footsteps. So here, the. Uh, Qualifiers for the junior final of the women's 100 metres backstroke, and Amber Rigg of Cockermouth is the fastest seed, a 15 year old in lane number four. And what a great job Sean, Sean Bowman and his team have done up there in Cockermouth with the, the whole of their squad for many, many years. What they produce is just extraordinary. They all work together as a fabulous team. Rigg in four, Knocker of Reeds in five, Take your five and six. Seven, it's uh, Holly Widows from uh, Mount Kelly, and eight is Rose of Wine, a bath cup of Tyler's uh, in, th in three, and two is three, and one is uh, Crees of Repton. Yeah, Amber Rigg, great time this morning. I think she's on the PB to go 63 62. She will have to drop a little bit of time if she wants to dip under that European Juniors time, but if she can, that also looks great for the junior relay as well. There is one uh, junior in the faster finals. Actually, in the A final, that's uh, Blythe Kingsman of Mount uh, Kelly. But uh, at the moment, right in the well, I was going to say right in the centre, but um, it looks like oh, where's the leader now? And it's changing all over the place. Uh, out very quick was uh, Holly Widows in lane number seven, closer to us in the white hat, and she's still just about leading. She is. She's clinging on. She has a strong last 50 here. Uh, last 50. She should be out. But actually, she's pulling away. She looks great. Well, this is a great swim. Lifetime best for her was what she set in the heat to qualify, 64-4. This is a super swim, 62? Come on. Well, she went 64-45 in the heat. She's just gone 62-25. <laughs> and look at that reaction. Well done. Well, yeah, how did I do that? What a swim that was. How, how on earth do you go two seconds faster after setting a lifetime best to qualify? That's the beauty of being an age group swim, I think. But yeah, amazing swim, massive drop from her there and under the European Junior qualifying time. Wow, that is outstanding. And she just kept on going. A great first 50, really good turn, but just kept on going, dug in. And Holly Widows at Mount Kelly, they're having a great meet, but that another two seconds on 100. Lifetime best, knock a second, ties third, Riggin fourth. Wow, that is outstanding. And the B final. Well, this is uh, a great place. I love that ready room. It really is a great place, isn't it, Molly? Yeah, it's an interesting place to be. You know, everyone kind of treats the ready room or the final core room very individually. So myself and Abby Ward always love to chat. We wanted to know where you're going on holiday, what you're doing next week. Whereas <laughs> did you really? We what did, are you talking yeah. About? Yeah, no, we just love kind of being down to earth and like leaving thinking about the race in the very last minute. And that definitely doesn't work for everyone, but for us it was perfect. And having there with me to be able to do that is so ideal. But yeah, a lot of people are kind of music on and really kind of visualize their race. But yeah, I'm quite the opposite. I'd like to be really relaxed going into my races. It is funny, because if you see some people like Chad the Clone and uh, Michael Phelps, I mean, it was like, 
Douglas wasn't sitting in the ready room for those two guys. Yeah, and I think some ready rooms can be really intimidating. I was quite lucky that the breaststroke girls on the board stage are all so, so lovely. And like, we'd almost, it's like we weren't going to kind of go into a 200 meter breaststroke battle. We were kind of just having a chat, talking about holidays. So <laughs> I was very lucky in that respect. Extraordinary. I've never heard that before. <laughs> This the B final of the women's 100 meters backstroke at the Aquatics GB 2024 swimming championships here at this wonderful Olympic Park, the London Aquatic Centre. Fastest seed in lane four, Rebecca Sutton of Swansea University with Molly Garrett, another an Olympian. She's in five. Take your marks. Varley and six for Plymouth, seven is Pryor of Derby, eight is Butler of Edinburgh, the Sutton in four, Anderson three, Everton two, and Mears in one. Great start from lane seven, Georgia from Derby XL. She was just off her best this morning, so about a second off, so I'm sure she'll be looking to improve on that here. And she's right on the lane line, she just needs to be a little bit careful, and it's great to be able to swim dead straight. This roof, I mean, it's a beautiful facility, but one of the little challenges, I suppose, is that the roof isn't straight. So if you do follow the lines on the roof, you can end up going a little bit wonky. So swimming on the lane line is fine, as long as you don't get your shoulder caught. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of feedback after the London 2012 Olympics around the shape of the roof, and it kind of veering off in the backstroke summer. So it's definitely something to be wary of going into backstroke racing. Well, she was on the far side of the lane line going up the pool, and now you can see just at the bottom of that shot, she's on this side of the lane line, so she'll end up swimming more than 100 metres. Also going well up there in four is Rebecca Sutton of Swansea. Sutton finishing well, but it looks like, well, in lane number seven, she swam really well. Georgina Pryor of Derby, a great swim from her. Rebecca Sutton, she did get the touch. Well, wow, that's interesting. I thought, uh, I thought that Pryor got it. So Sutton got the touch in lane, uh, in lane four, 62-1 with 62-3. Second for Georgina Pryor, Molly Garrett third, 62-8. Yeah, great last 50 there from Rebecca Sutton. I think she was the only swimmer under 32 seconds, so really well paced from her, and I'm sure she'll be happy with that. And lifetime best from the top two there, from Sutton and from Pryor. And Molly Garrett's right on her lifetime best in third. So next up are the uh, women in the MC 100 metres backstroke. Uh, over to you, Paul. Yeah, here they are lining up. Just, uh, you can see the figure of Alice Ty there, talking to her GB teammate. She looks relaxed, aren't she? Waving to the camera here in the ready room. Tall figure of Jessica Jane Applegate. She's been a world champion in this event before. And had some good swims in the heats this morning. Astrid Carroll wins them out. Great swim from the S12 swimmer. And there's Ella Litton Jones. What a swim she had. 115.37. The two visually impaired swimmers in the outside lanes. There's Alice Ty. Well, she is the world record holder in this event. Coming back, trying to make the Paralympics after missing out on Tokyo. Jessica Jane Applegate, the champion in 200 freestyle in 2012. One of the few survivors from the 2012 team. And there's a newcomer trying to make it to her first Paralympic Games, Olivia newman Baronius, as is Georgia Sheffield. They both in the S14 class. Same class as Megan Neve. Who had a great swim in the heats. And Poppy Maskell, also an S14 swimmer. Remember, only three from a single class can go for a single event. So the four swimmers in the middle. They're all tussling for those spots. Georgia Sheffield, Poppy Maskell, Megan Neve, Olivia Newman Baronius. There's Poppy Maskell, fastest in the heats at 105.98. That was inside the nomination time. Newman Baronius, the newcomer. Maxwell swimmer. Astrid Carroll in the outside lane. Ella Lett Jones on the other side of the pool, two in the S12 class. All the others are S14s with the exception of Alice Ty there in lane number seven, the world record holder. Expect Alice Ty to have the highest number of points. She too Take made a nomination time in qualification this morning. She doesn't get away from the wall as well as the others. All the others in the field. 
have got better legs than Alice Ty. She's a swimmer with a physical impairment, so Alice Ty, but once she's up into a stroke, just see the power of Alice Ty. Again, maybe Astrid Carroll just struggling on the lane ropes there, as we saw. And the S14s in the centre lanes are going to have a real battle here. Poppy Maskell going well, as we thought she might. 105.98. And she's maybe just behind, no, ahead of uh, Newman Baronius, only by six one hundredths of a second. Megan Neve going well in the centre, with Sheffield and Applegate close behind. But look at Poppy Maskell. Well, she was the emerging para swimmer of the year back in 2022. She's gone absolutely from strength to strength. The British record is actually the world record held by Bethany Firth at 104.05. And here comes Poppy Maskell. What a swim this is for Maskell. She's on great form here in London and just outside the world record, 104.78. She is followed home by a raft of swimmers there in uh, second, third and fourth. And look at Alice Tsai, look at the points total for Alice Tsai. Just over a thousand points for Alice. Again, a nomination time for her, as we expected from the world record holder. But a raft of nomination times here and fantastic points totals. Points are, of course, based on the world's best time over the last two years. And Poppy Masco and Alice Ty well over the 1,000 points. They are world-leading times that we've seen over the last two years. Poppy Masco has definitely been the form swimmer here in the para events. The first couple of days, fantastic swim in the 200 freestyle yesterday. And following that up with an excellent swim. What a time for Poppy Masco. It was very close as they went through the halfway point. Four or five S14 swimmers in the centre. But as they came into the second half of that one, Poppy Maskell stretched away at the front of the field to take that one in 104.78. But as we've seen in the para swimming records, it's not always the swimmer that touches first that takes the title. And that proved to be the case because Alice Ty, the world record holder, Summer with fantastic records, seven gold medals that she won in the World Championships right here in London in 2019. Missed out on the Tokyo Games in 2021, but it looks like she might be on her way to Paris. It's nomination time, of course. We can't say that they've qualified, but Alice Ty, 110.67. An amputation just last year, and she is back with a vengeance. 110.67 for Alice, 1,062 points. Oh, just looking down the field, Masco, Newman, Baronius, Megan Neve, great swims on the S14 swimmers, George Sheffield, fourth place in those S14s, Jessica Jane Applegate in fifth, great champion in the last decade or so, and the two S14, S12 swimmers in the outside lanes, Ella Lytton Jones and Astrid Carroll. Well, they have performed well today, bang on the times that they set personal best times that they set in qualification. So Alice Ty, Poppy Maskell and Olivia newman Bronius, they're the medalists and they will be with John. Well, I tell you what, she is back, ladies and gentlemen. Alice Ty, congratulations, British champion. I know... I thought that was a great time, but you're your biggest critic and you said you were really hoping for 109. Yeah, I mean, I went like 110.3 in Italy, um, and my world record's 108.04, so I was hoping to get 109. Um, but yeah, it's like the second fastest time I've done since amputation. Um, I'm not enjoying the late, late finals, to be honest. Um, but yeah, happy with it, and I think, as long as Dave's happy with it, I don't know where he is, yeah. but if Dave's happy, I'm happy. I mean, you'll find out soon enough, I'm sure. I'm sure he is, British champion. Um, you know, we, we caught up earlier today, you were sort of saying it's been such a journey coming back after your amputation, getting reclassified, and now, you know, missing the Paralympics, now they're coming up in the summer. It's gonna be a big one for you, you must be so excited. Yeah, I'm super excited. I'm, I've got my fingers crossed that I'll make the team. Um, I didn't really enjoy Rio. I wasn't in a great place mentally. And then missing Tokyo was absolutely gutting. So, you know, this will be my second games, which is crazy because I feel like I've been in the sport for too long. <laughs> <laughs> Never too long. You know what? We love watching you race and I think you're going to do brilliant things. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Alice Ty. Poppy, a silver medal 
A gold yesterday. Are you happy? Yeah. Yeah, you're happy. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Poppy Maxwell. <laughs> now, Olivia, again, you said you didn't swim backstroke, so this was a surprise. <laughs> yeah? You happy? Yeah. Yeah, she is. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your Paris Para British medalists. Uh, medals being presented by Georgia Davis, World European and Commonwealth medalist. Here's Olivia Newman Baronius. Is she selected? She'll be a brand new Paralympian, as will Poppy Masco. Alice Ty, as we've heard, be her second Paralympic game. She came to watch the Games in 2012, right here in London. And I wonder what she is going to do in Paris. It'll be a huge shock if they don't select Alice Ty for the Paralympic Games. That selection being made next week. Great performances from those three. So that was uh, Georgia Davis presenting the medal. She's the fourth fastest British 100 metres backstroke in history. And she'll be standing actually right next to us watching this next final. It is the Paris final of the women's 100 metres backstroke. It is the big one for these eight women. And in lane eight, Alicia Wilson, US based at the moment, training in Texas, moved there from, uh, from California. And then well, it's Holly McGill of uh, Sterling. In seven, Pia Murray of uh, Leyland Barracudas, and then Blythe Kinsman, the fastest junior, 17 years of age in lane two. In six, got Honey uh, Osren coming out. And this looks like, is it Medi Harris coming out in, uh, in lane three? I think that is, that is Medi Harris, so it uh, was uh, Honey Oswin in six. Three is Medi Harris, the Welsh record holder, the European champion on 200 backstroke. Lauren Cox, the World Championship bronze medalist on the 50 metres backstroke. Great speed, can she hold on for the 100? And then, well, our Olympic champion right in the centre, Kathleen Dawson, she's back, the British record holder. Olympic gold when she led off that uh, mixed medley relay. What an awesome swim that was holds the British record at 58.08. This is a hard one to call, Molly Renshaw. It is, but Kathleen had such a confidence boost in swimming this morning, you know. It was the first time since the last Olympics that she's dipped under 60 seconds. She got the qualifying time this morning, so if she can be first on the wall and do that again, she's on the team. Well, there she is, and uh, she was delighted with that time. She looked so smooth. And when she's really on it, Kathleen Dawson, just the momentum, she just... She's quite slight of body, but gracious me, she moves. Really, power to, rate, uh, power to weight ratio is extraordinary. Yeah, and she's a great performer, I think, leading into Tokyo. She just kept improving and improving, and she was what, European champion and went to the Olympics and won um, gold in that mixed relay, too. Well, the time they're looking for is 59.89. Dawson beat that in the heats. They've got to do it in the final, though. 100 metres backstroke final. Dawson in four, Harris in three, and Cox in five. Take your marks. So the big three right in the centre in this final of the women's 100 metres backstroke. Medi Harris in three, four is Dawson, five is Cox with the Honey Oswin in six. And this is going to be fascinating down this first 50. Yeah, great start there from Kathleen. I think she was first up at 15, really making the most of that underwater phase. But she looks really strong, she's going out fast. I think we could expect to see Lauren going out pretty fast as well with being that 50 metre specialist. So first of all, it is interesting me. I didn't expect this. Uh, Dawson is fastest out, 28.7. I thought Lauren Cox might be quickest to the 50, so Dawson's there and placed herself very well. She looks great, she's hooking the lane rope slightly towards Medi Harris, but she's definitely still leading. Hopefully she can pull away further than this last 25. Well, Dawson is looking good. She's got about 20 metres to go. Coming back is Lauren Cox, one lane closer to us from the leader in that those yellow lane lines. It looks like at the moment it's Dawson, but Cox still coming back, as in Harris. This is going to be very tight on the wall. Has Cox got the court touch? It is Kathleen Dawson. Oh, my goodness me, 59.74. She's improved again. 
Kathleen Dawson is back. She had a terrible back injury. She took a long time out of the water and now she's back. And look at that. 59-74. She's made this standard for the Olympic Games. She is going to Paris. That was a fabulous swim all the way through. The attack at the start and first to 50, amazing. Yeah, she paced that amazingly and I think she can be nothing but happy with that, you know. She's a little bit off her best still, but like you said, everything she's been through over the past few years, she's had back injury, she's dealt with a lot of rehab. Um, but yeah, I think that's just going to be a confidence booster and she's on the plane to Paris. That is outstanding. Really good start. Probably the best start just right in the centre there. But it was the attack down this first 50. I didn't expect her, maybe rightly or wrongly there, to be first at the 50. You know, Kathleen's amazing at the 50 as well. I think she was European champion over the 50 metres. So she's definitely strong in that, um, in that field. So it's just nice to see her kind of almost back to her normal self. And in the end, it was four tenths of a second. I have to say, I thought it was closer than that with the... Uh, a stroke in a bit to go. There's Medi Harris on the right-hand side. She ended up back in fifth place. So here's the result of the big final, the Paris final of the women's 100 backstroke. Look at that on the right-hand side. Nomination time for Kathleen Dawson wins it 59-7. Cox second, Osrin third. Let's hear that, what they've got to say with John. Well, I tell you what, what a way to finish the night. I can say this to you, Kathleen, you're off to Paris. Right? You look full of emotion there. Talk me through what's going on in your mind. It's just been such a roller coaster the last three years, so to have it all pay off and to be going to the Olympics again. <laughs> I just can't, I can't believe it. You know, you've got a lot of fans in by the sounds of it. We love it. You know, for you, 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 like you say, have been on a roller coaster. There's been injuries, there's been ups, there's been downs. This just must taste all the sweeter because of that. Yeah, I mean, like I said to you before, like, I can't look at it in a negative light because I've just come back from such, like, it was probably my lowest time after my, my highest point after the summer, so I just, I'm just happy to be here. We love to have you here. You know, is there anyone else out there that you want to thank that helped get you back here? Uh, everybody, my family up there, and the, um, the support staff, my coaches, uh, the guys at the IRU, everyone at Bristol Swimming, just thank you. <laughs> well, I tell you what, your performance was amazing and we will be seeing you in that pool in Paris. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Kathleen Dawson. Woo! Woo! Lauren, hi, it's wonderful to see you again. Wonderful to see you too. <laughs> you got yourself a silver medal, um, a great time. Uh, you know, Kathleen was just that little bit faster. Yeah, she's an incredible swimmer. I've looked up to her all my career. I remember I was here three years ago and she did amazing things then, so I'm so happy for her. Yeah, and you know, we watched you last year get that world bronze medal as well. It was an amazing thing to do on a stage like that. Um, you know, we don't swim the 50s, the 50 uh, forms at the Olympics. So coming in here and putting in a time like that, it's got to be a, a different expectation, I suppose, for you. Oh, definitely. The 100 has been a massive focus. The 50 is obviously my strongest, but I can only qualify in the 100, so it's just crazy. Hurts a lot more. <laughs> Hurts a lot more, I'm sure, that back end, right? Yeah. You put in a good performance in front of those selectors. Congrats so on that much. silver. And honey, <laughs> you look got out of that pool, smiling at me. You looked over the moon from lane six, getting a bronze medal. Yeah, I'm really happy. I just wanted to go in there and get a PB, so... Yeah. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And then swimming with all these girls has just been amazing. So they did really well. well you guys showed out, closed out the night with an amazing yeah, show. Congratulations. So Ladies and gentlemen, for the last time tonight, please give it up for your British medalists and Kathleen Dawson off to the Olympics. Well, I've got to say, I could not be happier for Kathleen Dawson. She's just gone, well, to say she's gone to hell and back is probably an understatement. She took such a long time out with a really tough back injury. And to come back, and to come back in that style, to beat the nomination time to go to the Olympic Games and win the final, she's going to Paris. And not only on the individual, but I'm sure that medley relay now is, uh, is looking that much better now with Sunday going under 60 seconds. Just a brilliant swim. I'm so pleased for her. So emotional. And uh, back to the studio now. And back to John. Well, what a night, Molly Ellie. There was so much drama in that pool, and not just the swimming, but some amazing performances from those uh, those athletes out there tonight. Oh yeah, 
what a night. I thought day one was special, but this night too, just to see that emotion there from Kathleen. I think what she said with all the things that she's been struggling, with all the injuries. And I think when you see the emotions that they show, it just means, it shows how much it means to them. And to get, for her to get a ticket to Paris, it's just incredible. Also the para guys as well, Alice Ty, with everything she's been through as well. Missing out on Tokyo and what she said on that interview as well. Sadly, not feeling mentally in the right in the right place in Rio to get another chance to go and to a Paralympics in to, in Paris. I was about to say Tokyo in Paris and with the amputation as well is just just fabulous to see. It was, and of course, Ollie Morgan. We can't forget him. What an incredible swim! He's just gotten better and better and better from last year. In one year, his development has been incredible. Yeah, and we were saying that on the commentary, and I think last year becoming triple British champion in the 1500 and the 200 backstroke, going on to the World Championships, I think that was a perfect prep for him going into Olympic year. So, yeah, amazing swim. He's got the 200 later this week, so excited to see what he's going to do. Yeah, I can't, so can't wait to see that as well, and I know that's one of Luke's favourites as well. He was looking good in the 100. Can't wait to see what he does later on in the week. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, what a night of racing. We're going to be back here tomorrow morning for the heats, and of course, live from 6.45 p.m. tomorrow evening for another night of action here at uh, the Speedo Aquatics GB Swimming Championships 2024. We'll see you there.